Okay, um, welcome back to uh, open session. Uh, let's see. I should mention that we were having some issues connecting to our YouTube channel. So board docs were um, to uh, just repeat what Ms. Aquino just mentioned, board docs were updated with a link to the Zoom meeting. Um, member, we are all back from um, from closed session. Member Rodriguez was having some technical difficulties, so hopefully he will be joining us shortly. Um, okay, and with that, um, if I could ask everybody um, to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic, and to the Republic for which, which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and, and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, five, item five is report out of closed sessions. I do have one item to report. It's item 3.3, anticipated litigation. We had a motion to approve staff recommendations. Um, the motion was made by member Rodriguez with a second by member Wynn. And um, the vote was unanimous in favor, five ayes. Thank you. Uh, and with that, we move to item six, student report. Mm -hmm. Student member Castillo. Thank you, President Martinez. Um, so on Monday, uh, as I'm sure you're all aware, um, uh, seniors were picking up cap and gowns at the high school uh, in front of the Star Lab. Um, and it was a huge um, display of emotion and um, support from all the teachers and staff. So on behalf of the senior class, I'd like to thank um, Ms. Canales, Ms. Rangel, uh, Coach K, and all the teachers for um, showing up and you know showing their support and solidarity with us. Um, it's not easy for anybody in the Newark Memorial community, um, but you know we're happy to um, be finishing the year out strong. Um, with regards to the senior events committee, um, I'm not sure if I can give out details, but I know that we do have. Uh, I'm aware that we do have something in the works, um, and um, Hopefully we'll be able to share more details soon. Um, and then lastly, AP exams are starting next week. Um, for those of you who don't know, they have been reduced to 45 minute exams. Um, they are all free response. They're just two questions um, for all the exams that Newark Memorial offers. Um, but we are understanding that most colleges are accepting them for credit. So um, students will obviously be earning some, uh, earning some credit over the next two weeks. Uh, that's all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Moving on to, um, let's see, we do not have a uh, spotlight on um, this week. Um, so number item eight is public comment on non-agenda items. Ms. Aquino, do we have some submissions? Yes, President Martinez, we do. It is now seven. 19 and I will begin public comment on non-agenda items. Dear Newark Unified School Board, my name is Loretta McCarthy. I teach third grade at Graham School. I have been at Graham since 1998. I have taught second, third, and fourth grade, multi-age classes, combo classes, and even a few years of looping with classes. Now recently I have been teaching online along with everyone else. At the staffing meeting this past week, I was disappointed to once again see the plan for combination classes at Graham again this year. When we know other sites have had small classes in third and sixth grade throughout the district. More importantly, a full fifth grade class is being made into two combo classes with a fourth, fifth, and a fifth, sixth. That is not what is best for students, teachers, or the ability to collaborate. Two years ago, we were in this situation and it was refreshing to have members from the district office come out to a staff meeting and listen to us, the teachers, tell you all the benefits of just opening the school year with slightly smaller classes. You know, we all know the benefits and I am not going to list them here. I hope you remember how that decision was reflected in the dashboard numbers. After the interruption 
to learning this year because of the coronavirus pandemic, it is more important than ever to give our students as much support and clear instruction in the 2021 school year. Let's keep fourth and sixth grade classes a little under the maximum number. Have two full fifth grade classes again as Graham students strive and succeed. I urge you to make the decision to avoid combination classes at all sites. It is a best practice, it is not equitable, and it's not going to help anyone as we all work to navigate the new normal in the upcoming year. To the Newark Unified School District Board of Education, in my 20 years of service in this district, this is only my second letter to the Board of Education. I am writing because the majority of our Graham families feel like they can't. I will speak up for our students and parents whose first language is not English. I am also writing to you because I am greatly concerned about the staffing at Graham for the 2020-2021. We are poised to have two upper grade combination classes and one straight class for fourth and fifth and for sixth grades. We are a Title I school. We have a high EL population. We have to share our science specialist with another school. We have a challenging load of social emotional needs, students who receive EBIC services, as well as students who will never have access to our EBIC counselor because they do not have Medicare to qualify. We have data from PBIS that shows our biggest number of behavior issues will be from students who will occupy the upper grade classes fourth through sixth next school year. Yet Graham is going to have two upper grade combo classes. For 2019-20, I do not understand how elementary schools were allowed to carry upper grade classes this year with very low numbers. Yet at Graham, we had an unstaffed fifth grade to start our school year. A long-term guest teacher who was not the right fit and had to leave to finally get getting a teacher in by November. These fifth graders need to have two small sixth grade classes. Their education is dependent upon it and our responsibility to advocate for what is best for them. Our fourth grades were full and our straight fifth grade was full and our sixth grade was full to 31. Our fifth and sixth grade combo was full. Yet another non-Title I school was allowed to carry well under the circumstances. It is critical for your members to hear and listen to the educators in our district. We are the front line. We are the adults in care of our students every single day. Your expectation of us is excellence. My expectation of you is equity and responsibility to our students. Do what is best for the most vulnerable high need schools. Be brave in advocating our most vulnerable students who are already facing insurmountable challenges just to get to school. Be equitable, which as you know, is not the same. Despite our school closure and need for long distance learning this year, and no matter what next year's instruction platform will be, I ask you to review the existing process and decision-making for forming the combination classes at all elementary schools with the lens of equity. I'm well aware that the district has financial obligation to keep the district solvent, which includes maximizing FTE. I am aware of what Grant's projections are for next year, and I would like to know we are, we are not given an inequitable load compared to other non-Title I sites. Sincerely, Grace Irwin, Graham School. Dear Newark Unified School District Board members, I've been a teacher in Newark Unified for 18 years at Graham Elementary. I'm writing to you because I am concerned about the things that have been occurring at Graham that greatly affect our students and their education. In the 2017-18, our school had a fourth, fifth grade combination class that was created a couple days before school started with the teacher that was transferred to our site by the Human Resources Department. That teacher resigned before the second trimester and that class had a revolving door of guest teachers after that. Then in 1819, the district once again asked our staff two days before school started to create another combo class in the upper grades. Our staff was not happy to hear that we were at being asked again to create a combo class after the horrible year our students had gone through. So as a staff, we spoke up and we were heard. We kept our fourth, fifth grade classes slightly below a full class. And that year we raised our test scores. We were recognized by the district and school board for our growth. We know the smaller class sizes help. Then the days before the 1920 school year, the district told us to create combination fifth, sixth class. Our numbers in fifth and sixth seemed the same from the previous year, but we couldn't understand why we would need to do this. We also had a fifth grade class that was not staffed yet. That class went through two long-term guest teachers that did not fit our community. Took until November to get a teacher assigned to that room. We also have two full fourth grade classes, a full fifth and full sixth grade class. What is concerning to me is that while this was all happening at our site, there were other schools in the district that were 
able to stay with their low numbers in the upper grade classes. That does not seem equitable. I am closing upon the three minute mark. Now prepping for the 2021 school year, we're being asked to create combination classes for our projected numbers with two combination classes in the upper grades. Graham is a Title I school with very high ELD student population. We have many students who receive EBIC services. Our students deserve better than this and a combination class is just not it. I'm asking that you review the process and decision making for combination classes. Sincerely, Rosanna Sepulveda. Um, my apologies, next one. My name is Melissa Veal and I have been a teacher at Graham Elementary School for a little over 18 years. I felt that this letter, my first address to the board in many years in the district was necessary to write in order to allow me to make an honest effort to ensure that students at Graham Elementary School are provided a fair and equitable chance to succeed academically. I realize that these are words you may have already heard or read numerous times, but my hope is that at least this time, you will see how a simple decision on your part can have a positive and lasting impact on the success levels our Title I students can achieve. It is important for you to know that at the beginning of the school year last year, we were dealt a hard and emotional card to play. It was also an extremely last minute card involving the need for our staff to reshuffle our already settled classroom cards at the end of our workday for the sake of a newly created combination class. This immediately resulted in our staff's request to see and speak with members of the district office. This meeting occurred late in the afternoon in our school library with both office and staff and teachers present. In all my years at Graham, this marked the first time we as a staff acknowledged that we had to speak up for the sake of our students. Needless to say, we are thankful that our concerns were heard, our students experienced a year of having smaller class size and no combination classes in the upper grades. The result, our students whose test results so often are not able to compete with those of other schools in our district showed noticeable and undeniable improvement. I was present at the Graham Spotlight Board meeting when this bird presented the impressive results. They cemented what we had long said we needed for our school community. Furthermore, I felt it was a true testament to what we desperately needed in order to continue our student success. It was something we all hope you would not only celebrate, but see and ultimately help you to realize how much Graham School needs your support. Sadly, the beginning of this school year saw Graham return to what seemed to be an unfortunate norm, bigger class sizes, a combination class, five, six, and full fifth grade class that had no official teacher for most of the beginning of the school year. The newer community is very close one, but my site colleagues and I have always been aware that the fact the other schools were able to have much smaller classes while we continually fought and still fight an exhausting battle to keep our classes small and our students confident and successful. Next school year's classes do not look any better. We are looking at yet another fifth, fifth sixth combo and added fourth, fifth combo and only one fourth, fifth and sixth grade class, all of which will be maxed out, I'm sure. The obvious question remains, why is Graham not afforded smaller classes to avoid combination classes yet other sites are? I can only imagine based on what I've seen over and over again, how the district sees our school site, a place where since hardly anybody other than teachers speaks their piece, rash, unfounded educational decisions can find their resting place. One other rash decision that begs to be mentioned is our site's copy limit per teacher. Apparently this was news to the a district official. As of today, we still continue to wait for the limit to be lifted. It is my hope that you hear my request to you as one that is respectful, straightforward, and simple. I am requesting that you please review the process that took place to create these combination classes at Graham School and whether or not other schools had have to go through the same process. In that same line, I am also requesting that you review the reasons behind why Graham does not have the option of creating smaller classes instead of other sites, as other sites do. The goal here is student success and even the answers you find are not the answers I hope to hear. I will be better off knowing that those who provide are one space on district strong belief in equity for all students and sites, school sites. I, along with our school community, put my trust in you. Students need your help. Parents need your help. We are sometimes parents only voice and we ask that you understand the human heartfelt reason why we have to fight for them as well. A Title I school does not beg it Title I teachers. If anything, it creates individuals with more room for growth and true understanding of what a Title I population needs. 
In this case, it has created a community that recognizes that fairness and equity are not at the forefront of many decisions that have been made for Graham School. I assure you we are not a community whose purpose is to rock the boat just for the sake of negative, idle conversation. We are simple and have been for a long time a school community that has waited far too long for the opportunities needed to make our school site the one that can truly inspire and educate. Thank you for your time. Newark Unified School District. My name is Delight Evans Vasquez and I am a teacher at James Graham Elementary. I started in Newark so excited that my dream of becoming a teacher was finally coming true. You see, I always wanted to be a teacher and along the way I became a little distracted and had a baby before I finished college. Having a baby made my goal of finally becoming a teacher even better. Gosh, I remember the feeling, it was amazing. I am proud to be a teacher. I am proud to be a Newark teach, a teacher in Newark. My years at Graham have been wonderful. The students, staff, and families are great. We have had incidents that have really brought us close. We have had many principals, staff illness, stressful events, and even went through the death of a coworker. All of these events made us stronger and closer. Through my years in Newark, I realized that the budget gets tighter and tighter. I get it that staffs are reduced and classes get larger. I understand that combination classes need to be created because of numbers, but do they really? I am not happy with the news that Graham will have a four or five combo and a five, six combo. Really, an entire class of fifth graders will be made into combo because of the numbers. Well, I call that BS. I will tell you why I call that BS, and that is because of fairness and equity. I can recall a year where BGI had five classes only with 20 or less third grade students, small classes. A third grade class at Kennedy and only 12 students, small classes. I believe that Lincoln has very small sixth grade numbers this year. I could go on and on. Does the district not realize that we teachers do talk and that we are able to figure out numbers as well? I believe Graham is not being treated fairly or equitably. I apologize, I'm at three minutes. I have to um, cut stop at that point. My apologies, Delight Evans Vasquez. Morning, it has been brought to my attention that the dual immersion program for Schilling Elementary has been put on hold. This is a very big disappointment to me. There should be no reason this cannot move forward. The excuse of COVID is not valid in my opinion. The teachers and staff have more time than ever to plan and execute the upcoming year. The brunt of the teaching duties have fallen on the shoulders of us, the parents, and we are looking to our school board to set up and lead. This is a time for show our children that they are valued and every effort should be put forth to better their education. Do not postpone the dual immersion program. Lead by example and don't let a break in the school year show the kids that we cannot get back to normal school programming as help them get the best education they deserve. Thanks, Lake. Culpepper. Dear Newark community members and the board, to say that children are our most precious resources and understatement, they will become our next leaders, educators, healthcare professionals, and workers entrusted with making decisions about us. Will they have the proper tools to get their jobs done well? Will they be able to think critically, problem solve, and know how to ask just the right questions? As an educator in Newark, I am concerned about these questions in these unprecedented times, our actions are speaking louder than words. At Graham Elementary, we, have, we will have not one, but two upper grade combination classes, classes that will compromise both grade levels, classes that may have to take shortcuts to accommodate a divergent group of learners. We cannot afford to have split grade levels at Graham. As a Title I school, it is imperative we focus on consistent support within a single grade level. What can we do as a unified district to show our learners that we do not want to combine or compromise their education? Please reconsider the development of combination classes at Graham Elementary. Our learners are depending on our actions and they require our support. Thank you, Mrs. Joan Davis, James Graham Elementary. My name is Carissa Robinette. I teach at Newark Memorial and I am writing to express my appreciation and support for our current interim principal, Olivia Rangel. She has worked hard to provide constant communication with staff and students. Teachers feel heard and appreciated. Olivia truly cares about the students at Newark Memorial and wants to see them succeed. Olivia has provided staff with support even as we have faced challenges. She has been responsive to our needs as teachers, but more importantly to those of our students. 
She is visible on campus and available when we need her. There have been times that I've had to text or call after hours and she has responded quickly with support and direction. She continues to lead us on this journey fearlessly, even as we head into unknown territory with this pandemic. She always handles situations professionally and promptly. Olivia highlights what staff and students are doing and makes Newark Memorial shine. I have known and worked with several principals and I have never felt more a part of a team than I do now under her leadership. Olivia is the leader we need at Newark Memorial to lead the staff and students toward new levels of success in all areas. Thank you, Carissa Robinette. Dear Newark Unified District School Board members, I am fourth grade teacher at Graham School and have been teaching here for 13 years. I've also been at another elementary school site within Newark, totally 17 years of dedication to the community. As a devoted teacher to the Graham School community, I would like the district to reconsider the two combo classes, fourth, fifth, and fifth, sixth, that we have created for 2020-2021 school year. I am proposing that Graham School have two fourth grade, two fifth grade, two sixth grade classes with all smaller class sizes. According to the district's website, Newark Unified School District is committed to the academic success and social development of all stu students. Our mission is to empower students in becoming lifelong learners, who possess the skills, ethics, and creativity to reach their full potential as contributing productive, responsible citizens in partnership with the community. We provide an education that develops the unique abilities of every student. Approving this would align with those values. There are several benefits to the proposal. Allows for one-to-one -one and small group instruction, the current 2019-2020 fourth graders, next year's fifth graders, a large portion, more than average, are receiving some type of service such as resource speech and or counseling. Improvement in students' academic achievement in the 2018-19 school year, Graham teaches, teachers fought for small classes and it yielded raised test scores. Allow for deeper and meaningful connections to be made between teacher and student family. Each year, I find myself filling out more and more cost referrals and trying to provide families with just basic needs such as food, shelter, clothing, prescription glasses, and so forth. My job passion, my calling as an educator at Graham School is to give voice to the voiceless and power to the powerless, which is why I urge you to reconsider not what is simple, simply fair, but what is equitable. I appreciate the time and effort the district puts into providing a great education for all Newark students. My hope is that you consider and at a minimum have discussions as to what's best for Graham's community. Sincerely, Stephanie Sheridan, fourth grade teacher. This is last public comment. Dear President Martinez and board members, we come to you as a group of 12 classified management employees representing a combined total of 110 years of NUSD service and experience. Many of us are alumni, community members, and have children who are products of Newark schools. We have a vested interest in the success of our students and district. This is only one reason why we feel very passionate about you as the Board of Education having the opportunity to hear our explanation and see the 224-260 presentation given to Executive Cabinet. On March 7th, representatives from the Classified Management Team gave a presentation to Acting Superintendent Salinas and Executive Cabinet. It was a brief and concise PowerPoint that clearly showed facts and evidence regarding the 224-260 work year issue in rebuttal to the changes proposed by the Chief Business Official. To date, we have not received facts or evidence, only opinions. We were told that the PowerPoint hard copies would be provided to the Board of Education. Our question is, did the board receive this presentation in March 2020 as promised? We believe you did not, and we would like the opportunity to present it to you prior to the May 21st board meeting. We trust that the board would like facts from both sides in order to make a prudent decision. In addition to our facts and evidence, we presented minutes from a board meeting in which the board at the time approved this pay structure, which was over 20 years ago. We have been advised the district has made the decision to move forward with changing the terms and conditions of our work year by adding 36 days without adding any compensation whatsoever and cutting our daily per diem. As classified employees per ed code, we are entitled to paid holidays and vacation. 
changing the pay structure to 260 and not adding the salary to reflect payment for holidays and vacation does not follow ed code and would continue to deprive us of the benefits due to all classified employees, including the 12 members of the classified management group. Prior to May 21st board meeting, we are asking for a few minutes of your time virtually to show you the facts and evidence that support our case before you officially vote to lower our daily per diem. We are happy to show each of you separately so as to not violate the Brown Act. The accusation that we are giving ourselves a raise or double dipping is false. It is our sincerest hope that you will find the value in us as very dedicated and hardworking employees and won't deny us the statute benefits that we are entitled to. That is the end of public comment. Thank you, Ms. Aquino. Uh, and with that, we move to item nine, uh, superintendent report. Yes, thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, President Martinez, members of the board, um, staff and community. Um, as we enter now, I believe it's, it is our, our ninth week, eighth week of this pandemic. Um, certainly our families, our teachers, our staff has been, have been working diligently to ensure that our students are, are taken care of, our staff continues to work very hard. Um, and I have to tell you, our administrators have really come forward to ensure that kids are getting fed, uh, teachers are supported, and we, and we continue to do our work. So this evening, I wanna share um, just an update of what's been happening around the district. Uh, Ms. Aquino, next slide. So first I want to start with just a little bit of an update around graduations and promotions. Thank you, student uh, board member uh, Castillo. Uh, more to come, but I want to first give a shout out to the graduation 2020 committees. Um, as you recall, uh, we had um, our principals engage with students and we also had two board members, member Wynn and member Gutierrez, who took part in supporting um, each of these two committees to move forward and do some planning around it. What I can share is that at this point there has been a decision by both of the secondary sites, uh, the, uh, Bridgepoint, the McGregor campus, and also by New York Memorial High School that they will be doing uh, virtual documentary uh, graduations that are online. Um, and I want to share that that decision as, as a board, a student board member Castillo said did not come easily because we want to make sure that our students were celebrated and again um, to to come to something that's online was a really difficult decision. So what we said was that they would go forward with this because there was also a need to recognize students in June, but that we would also continue to plan for something in the late fall um, so that students can come together and, and be celebrated. And hopefully by then we may be in a different position with uh, smaller groups of people being able to get together. Um, so at this point, each principal uh, is working with a documentary and we'll share some details soon. So parents of seniors and senior students, please be on the lookout for some emails um, and information from uh, each of these committees and from each principal. Um, elementary and junior high, we're meeting tomorrow with our principals to discuss some plans and each principal will be sharing out information with their families. Our sixth grade teachers are an important, are playing an important role in this and they have already done some preliminary planning with families, with PTAs um, to really start to problem solve of like how do we celebrate our students and so we're going to discuss these ideas tomorrow and that information will come out from each of the principals, the junior high, Mr. Neal, and then from our elementary principals. And finally, I wanna share that in the coming weeks, the McGregor campus will have their cap and gown distribution. Uh, next slide. So first, again, as, as uh, our student member said, it was a wonderful time um, distributing caps and gowns. And um, it took everyone. We had teachers there. We had board members there. Our principals, our administrators, Coach K, um, and, and the whole administrative team with Ms. Rangel, and uh, just did a fantastic job. And so as you can see, the marquee is scrolling with student names. Um, so thank you to our classified staff that helped to put that up there. Um, and students were driving by with face coverings, but receiving their caps and gowns. Uh, next slide, please. 
And what every student got to take home was one of these wonderful lawn signs. And as you've been seeing these across Alameda County, it really is a way to recognize who in our neighborhood has a graduating senior. And so that was fun to distribute those. I do want to add that our Bridgepoint students will also be getting those as a special surprise. Maybe I ruined the surprise, but I want to make sure that everyone knows that we're not excluding any of our senior students. Um, so that was fun. And there we see um, our board members members and Mr. Dolovich. And so just it was just a wonderful celebration. Um, so if you see one of these lawn signs in your neighborhood, uh, when you drive by, give a wave, give a honk, and, and certainly recognize our wonderful seniors class of 2020. Uh, next slide, please. I want to recognize, and then later on this evening, we are going to be passing two resolutions by our board. For our board, it is important that we recognize our teachers and our classified staff. So the month of May is always a special time. Uh, you know, we want to recognize our folks all year round, but in May in particular, special things happen. And so as you see here, the Graham, um, the Graham staff, one of our PTA rock stars, uh, Ms. Wynn is there and our classified staff, uh, recognizing uh, teachers at Graham Elementary with their own lawn sign and some goodies. Uh, there was a lot of social media posts and just appreciations from all of our principals. And each principal did something very unique for their staff. Next slide, please. I want to share um, something that really struck my heart. Um, and so, you know, follow us on Twitter, follow our schools on Twitter, uh, check out our website, um, and you'll see that our teachers are so engaged and they really do miss our students. And so I, I just thought this was fabulous. So Mr. King adding a message to, in chalk in front of the school. So as our families are taking walks throughout the neighborhood to ensure they're staying healthy and getting some steps in, um, know that your teachers love you and they miss you. Your principals love you and they miss you. And so I just thought this was just something really special. So thank you to our teachers for Teacher Appreciation Week that we're in and coming up will be our classified. And last week, uh, last Friday, May 1st was actually, excuse me, not May 1st. Uh, oh, it was, it was, it, um, it was our principals and so celebrating our principals who really have stepped up and gone above and beyond the call of duty to ensure that our kids are being fed, have access to Chromebooks. And so again, the month of May is a time to celebrate all of our staff. Uh, next slide, please. So just as we recognize our own, our own staff and community, um, I want to recognize that our congressman, Congressman Ro Khanna, reached out and asked us uh, to select um, three teachers to celebrate and recognize teachers that took a very active role during this pandemic. And so uh, immediately we, we had a survey go out to um, all, all staff and we said nominate someone, nominate a teacher who has stepped up and has reached out to really support teachers with online learning, um, lent a hand to a staff member who needed support. And um, as we went through all of this, um, we saw that some teachers uh, stood out. And this is not to say that any of our teachers are any less. I mean, I think as it, in respect to the pandemic and what's happened through distance and remote learning, um, Ms. Loretta McCarthy at Graham Elementary School, third grade teacher, just wonderful words about how she would lend a hand, how she would say she wasn't very tech savvy, but she is, and always any teacher would reach out to her for support, and she's always there to support them. Uh, Mr. Tristan Shevin uh, at Newark Junior High School, just a big recognition. Um, I don't know how many of you know this, but this is a legacy here. So both of his parents are teachers in our district. And um, again, he continues with the tradition of serving and giving back to the Newark community. So as a language arts English teacher, a big support to his colleagues and um, the nominations that came in for him really spoke to how collaborative he is. So thank you. And then this, this last name is not a stranger to any of you here on the board or a community. It is certainly Mr. Timothy Merritt, who as a teacher at a Newark Junior High School wears many hats, including the hat we always see him wear, but he does wear many hats. And one is as the president of the NTA. And, you know, talk about wearing many hats. So ensuring that we had this distance learning plan in place, working collaboratively with Mr. Dolovich and with um, human resources to make sure we had the tools for our teachers. And then finally, supporting his colleagues at the, at the school site. So um, 
we could have sent many, many more names. Um, uh, the congressman's office said, send us three. And so we sent these three names forward. And so as I'm looking right now, I'm getting text messages from some of the principals saying that if you go on Facebook, Congressman Ro Khanna's page, he is already uh, displaying the pictures and the recognition for each of these uh, three teachers. So uh, be on the lookout for that. So a big recognition and thank you. Uh, next slide, please. So I wanted to give an update. As you remember, the last time we met, I wanted to share just kind of what's been happening with child nutrition. So I asked uh, our director, Mary Sayers, to give us an update. And what she shared is that since we went away to remote learning and shelter in place, we have served approximately 25,000 meals to students. And that's been through the bag lunches at our, at our uh, locations. As you know, um, based on the California Department of Education's uh, relaxing of the rules, we were able to provide multiple meals at once so that we can minimize the times that families had to come out. Uh, and so we have meals that are provided on Mondays and Wednesdays, two meals on Monday and three on Wednesday. And then our locations, in Newark Junior High School, our central kitchen that's near Birch Grove Intermediate. And we added uh, just this last week, uh, Shilling Elementary School as our third location. What we have found is that the, the need is out there and the need is deep. And so we know that as a school district and, and the board, the Board of Education, it's important that we ensure we serve our families. And so this is one way um, that we're doing that. And so these three sites will continue to operate all the way through August 10th um, through the summer. So I wanted to make sure we share that. Again, look at our website for that information. Um, after speaking with uh, our director, with Mary Sayers, she, she knows that during the summer, I don't know how many of you know this, but we provide the meals, the school district provides the meals for our, um, our students who are doing summer camps or are visiting the library or are at the park. And so that will continue, but in a different way. While we know our library more than likely won't be open, um, you know, because of the construction and also because of the other things that are happening because of the pandemic. And we know that some of our parks, again, the play structures are closed and all of that. So what her decision was around ensuring that a fourth site that a fourth site was going to be placed at the Salvation Army. And that will happen as soon as school is out and we will have four locations for meals. And so she will continue to work with the California Department of Education. If, if you've been getting meals in the last couple of weeks, you've noticed there's avocados and pears and kiwis in there. So she'll continue to augment with more uh, fruits and vegetables. Next slide, please. In terms of attendance, and so as we made the transition to um, uh, more regulated distance learning, and as we went into the next phase of distance learning, um, our teachers uh, rose to the occasion with our principals to ensure that we had a better accounting of where our students were. And so I can report that based on the data, every Friday our teachers submit um, their attendance rosters to our principals and our principals then work with their office clerks and send this all into student services. We have seen that we have 95% of our students participating in distance learning. Is that a good enough number? Absolutely not. But we want to show that as we've continued to track, our attendance keeps increasing. So our attendance clerks, thank you so much. Continue to make those phone calls to our families to see why we're not connecting. Is it because of a Chromebook? Is, um, is it because of no Wi-Fi or what we can do to continue to support? We still have Chromebooks available and we will continue to send that message out um, to families and with my um, Monday email and to families and so we'll share that information again. Um, we've also now tapped into our community liaison to do a deeper call with families. Um, a lot of times, you know, our principals and our teachers are juggling a lot of things and we want them to at least do the first reach out and then if there is a family that they're still not getting in touch with um, that's where our community liaison our student services coordinator steps in and ends up 
making phone calls and really delving deeper to find out why we're not engaging with a family. Um, and so we've noticed that that's increased our attendance. And finally, we know that our next step is to prioritize our outreach to our secondary schools because that's where we're seeing uh, the least amount of participation. So um, that's gonna be a next step as we support work with our principals um, and our office staff at the high school, uh, the McGregor campus and the junior high because that's where we're seeing that we need have a greater need of outreach to our students. Next slide, please. In terms of registration, so registration, online registration continues. Um, we certainly started off to a good start at the beginning, uh, but then the pandemic hit. So we want to make sure that our families know that uh, registration is open and, and it's online and so we, we said how do we measure how are we doing this time last year and so if you see the 2019-2020 at this point of time um, last year we were a little bit less in terms of elementary of online registrations um, at the junior high um, we have seen a dip and we have to again address our secondary but we have an uptick at the high school in, in the number of, of online registrations that have been completed along with alternative ed so these numbers uh, we're going to build on it and be able to bring this back to the board as um, as ongoing updates, but we thought it was important um, to share where were we at this time last year and how do we continue to get better. So I've asked Ana Leon, our coordinator, she is building um, some a virtual workshop with how to register online and that will be starting next week and I'll share that information at the next slide. Um, she is also building, thank you, we had some board members who have certainly been in contact with some community members about what else could we do to support and that would be to have um, some PDFs with screenshots with steps on how to register and so we will be posting that on our website in both English and Spanish. And finally, we know that with some of our folks, um, honestly, we need a, the, the personal touch. And so our parent partners will be supporting by calling parents and walking parents through the process on the phone so that we can make sure that our families are registered and we're capturing um, their registration for the 2021 school year. Next slide, please. And so we will be posting this and sending this out to our families. Um, on Wednesday, May 13th, uh, we will have uh, an online workshop of how to register and uh, Ms. Leon will be holding that and then we will do uh, the English uh, workshop at 11 a.m. and the workshop in Spanish at 2 p.m. Um, and we will have all of the information as to how to log on or how to call and that will be sent out to all of our families and to our school principals and posted on our website as well. Next slide. Uh, we wanted to be sure that we updated you around uh, the FEMA update. Um, so on, on March 23rd, our, our uh, chief business official um, went ahead and made sure that we submitted a request for public assistance. And this is the initial step as we apply for emergency protective measures. We don't know yet what we will qualify for, but what we've asked every department head to do is to continue to keep um, a log as to what we're doing that's over and above because of this pandemic. So everything from um, as simple as creating a, um, a log for entry for employees into the school sites, um, the extra cleaning that we have had to do, um, any of that. So we're making sure that we're keeping track of it with the hope um, that we're able to get um, some kind of compensation from FEMA funds um, as moving forward. On March 31st, uh, the district received notice that the state, so we had Senate Bill 117, we received an apportionment of funds to be able to, as a district, purchase the PPE and also engage with overtime and, and support for schools. As you remember, as we were working through our, um, you know, the cleaning of the schools and ensuring that our schools were safe and clean, um, we did incur overtime. And so um, 
there was a cost to that. And the good news is that we received some funds. And so at this point, funds have been allocated. We've been able to order masks. Uh, we've been able to order supplies, extra cleaning supplies, and also um, able to pay for some of the overtime that we've had to date to clean the schools. Um, certainly, it's not going to be enough. And that will speak to why we have this application in for more FEMA funds. Um, you know, as you may have seen uh, on a lot of the newscasts, um, we are waiting for the May revise. And there is a lot of uncertainty in every school district in the state of California as to what the impact's going to be. So we are bracing ourselves for that. And uh, Ms. Delacruz will be able to answer more of those questions later on. But um, certainly it is a worry and um, some planning that we need to do around as a district. Next slide, please. Uh, continuing with communication, um, thank you to the City of Newark. Their website is phenomenal. There's a lot of great information there, so we encourage you to visit the City of Newark website. And I am in communication with our city manager um, to just kind of keeping him up to date on what's happening and also with our, our police. Um, visit our website where we update every information. We have weekly communications that go out to families every Monday and also educational services for our staff sends out newsletters to all staff every Friday. Um, next slide, please. And so now folks are asking, well, what are the next steps? And um, the next steps are we're getting ready to close out the school year as, as um, kind of incredible as that sounds. Uh, we can't wait. Uh, for the regular timeline. And so uh, on a parallel track, students are continuing to have distance learning, continuing to have outreach from their teachers and principals. But on the next track is that we're meeting with our principals and with educational services and the uh, maintenance operations as to what are gonna be the logistics for the locker clear out, for teachers and staff to clear out their classrooms for the end of the school year. And so we anticipate having that information in the coming weeks. And, um, and so that's the planning we're doing now. In terms of summer school, what I can share is that our plan, like the majority of our districts in Alameda County is that we're going to primarily focus on credit recovery and special education. Unfortunately, as we start to hunker down for um, some of the anticipated shortfalls of, of the, you know, the May revise, we also know that we, it is, we owe it to um, ensuring that our students that need credits to uh, graduate, that we have options for them. So that's going to continue along with students in our continuation high school program, and also special education. And this is preschool through 12th grade, where we have an obligation um, to continue with support with extended school year options for our students um, who are in their special education programs. We are also looking at hiring and so um, Thank you to Ms. Saavedra. She and her team and human resources have developed some protocols and the process for virtual hiring interviews and procedures. We're going to roll that out with the principals tomorrow at our weekly meeting um, and take it from there. And then our principals are working really hard with their school site council teams. We still have to continue with our site plans, our single plans for student achievement, and they're continuing to do that. We hope to bring the single plans for student achievements or the SIPSAs to our Board of Education at the first June meeting for review and approval. Next slide, please. Continuing with planning for 2021, um, I do want to share um, with the dual language immersion. So upon a lot of research on my part and reflection, um, as I shared before, you know, my background is that I've started uh, two dual immersion programs, one in Mandarin and one in Spanish, and um, looking at what it takes to do that for a first year. And, and I also did some phone calls to some colleagues in San Francisco Unified um, and some of our surrounding neighbors neighbors. And um, I made the, the very tough decision to suspend um, the start of our DLI program for this next school year. We felt, I felt that um, at this point, we are going, we not, we are not yet sure what it would look like in the fall. Will we have a hybrid model? Will we still be virtual? Will we have some in class? And when I weighed that with what the research says, about starting a new program and what the research would support for a student who is brand new uh, to kindergarten and then to have to manage 
um, virtually learning a second language and then also for our teachers um, to give them the support that they really need to do this um, the decision that i made um, was to suspend it for one year use this year to really do some deeper planning and rollout. i have asked uh, dr wendy um, or principal at Schilling to see if there might be an opportunity to do some after school or some online spanish conversational for the whole district or excuse me for the whole school site to see if that might be an option for families um, but it was a very tough decision to make but it had to be made and and um, and I wanted to share that with you all this evening um, in terms of planning continuing planning for 2021 um, what I have now started is we have these collaborative work groups our first group met already this week and that was under mr. Dolovich he is going to be looking at curriculum and instruction meeting with members of, of CSEA NTA administrators this was just a preliminary meeting to see who else we needed to engage with and what he will look at is what are the guidance that we have from the Department of Education from Alameda County office and what will it look like in the fall and we know we don't have a crystal ball but we can't wait and so we need to start to do some planning around a hybrid model possibly or um, some kind of a, a different way of opening up the fall 2021 school year um, and so the more we do that the quicker we can get this information out to our families and to our students miss de la cruz is going to head a facilities work group with miss condon from the maintenance and operation office and what that's going to look at is our facilities what do our classrooms have to look like if we are still under the restrictions of 12 to 15 individuals in a classroom how will we you know what is the plan for removing furniture out of rooms to ensure we have and can assure distance um, within a classroom um, what how do we have to outfit our front offices with I'm sure many of you have seen grocery stores with the plexiglass in the front um, so that will be the work of the facilities work group under their direction policies Ms. Aquino will support me um, as we start to work through the CSBA and then bringing uh, drafts to our uh, Board of Education who are our governance team and they and we will bring forward policies that are coming forward because again this is a new normal but we have to make sure that we have policies in place to ensure this new activities and this new start of learning and then finally staffing Ms. Saavedra will be working with our labor partners um, to ensure that um, we have their input we are collaborative and that we have safe schools for our employees to work at and so she will be heading that committee um, and then finally I want to share around school safety committees I was listening to there's a there's a lot of great research and planning out there and so I was listening to um, one of the, uh, the directors of public health and what they're recommending at this point is that we revive site school committees where it is composed of the school leader um, a CSEA employee uh, NTA employee and and perhaps a parent um, the head of a committee um, to really have this touch point where on a weekly or every two week basis come together so one of the examples they said you know you're going to evaluate that first week back and and you're going to have your committees that are coming together to say you know we noticed that there was too many students in line at the let's say uh, during brunch time and that would be something that the school safety committee would have to address immediately because they're the ones seeing it with the support of the district certainly but um, that is one of the directions from the public health department and so we will be instituting that for the 2021 school year next slide And finally, uh, this is kind of my, uh, my quote, I think, for the summer and for the year um, from Margaret Wheatley, there is no power for change greater than a community discovering what it cares about. And what I know about Newark is that we care about our kids and we care about our community. So thank you, Newark. Thank you, staff. Thank you, board, for your confidence. Because really, um, our board is, is, is very much interested in ensuring that we have safe, safe schools to come back to. So I appreciate that and I will continue to give updates so thank you and thank you for the indulgence for a little bit more time that I took this evening but we had a lot to share there's been a lot going on so thank you and that concludes the superintendent's comments
Thank you, Superintendent Salinas. No, um, uh, yes, it, it, it was a, a, a long report, but it was much needed. A lot of these um, topics are obviously near and dear to everybody, um, all of our stakeholders, not just us, of course. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and with that, we move to item 10, um, staff report. Yes, uh, Ms. Uh, our CBO will be um, introducing this report. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. So if you recall, um, on March 19th, the board approved our second interim report with a qualified certification. And soon after that, we submitted it to the Alameda County Office of Education. And um, with this, they sent us their letter of review that concurred with the board's uh, qualified certification. And with the qualified certification, there are some requirements that um, they are requesting the district to follow. And the first one is that we have to submit a third interim report, which is um, uh, uh, similar to the first and second interim report, except that it doesn't have uh, the criteria and standards and we don't have to self-certify positive, qualified, or negative. So it'll uh, give the board another picture of the state of the budget as of April 30th, 2020. And uh, we plan to bring that to the board at the next meeting, the May 21st meeting. And the county is also asking that we provide them a detailed list of board approved budget balancing solutions which the board has already done. We do have two resolutions that have already been approved by the board. So we'll be, we'll be submitting that as well. Um, they're asking for a written update on the progress of our district advisory uh, school consolidation committee. And right now we have a tentative meeting um, scheduled for May 27th. And we're still working on finalizing the details of that agenda. So we hope to have an, an update for the county um, by the time we submit the third interim because we are still moving forward with the advisory committee. The county also mentioned um, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we need to be prepared because we're we're not really sure what the impact is going to be to the general, uh, the state's general fund, especially in terms of revenues. What we've heard today, uh, the Department of Finance has just released um, an estimate of what they're thinking the um, pandemic is going to impact the state. And they're estimating right now a loss of revenue of about $41 billion. And that's 41 billion. That's $9 billion from this year and $32 billion in lost revenues for next year. And on top of that, the added additional expenditures of uh, $13 billion. So the total budget deficit estimated right now is about $54 billion. So what the county and a lot of other um, um, agencies such as school services and FICMAT they're advising that districts um, best case scenario right now is to plan for a zero percent cola at one time uh, best case was something less than two percent and now what we're hearing is best case scenario is a zero percent cola at second interim the cola was projected at 2.29 percent so for our district it could mean an additional one and a half million to two million in additional budget reductions. And unfortunately, um, when we say 0% is best case, it means that we could, we could and may possibly see a deficit, a negative COLA. So the, the May revision is supposed to come out around May 14th. And as soon as we get more information, we, um, I'll share that with the board, but that's kind of where we're at right now.
Thank you, um, Ms. Ella Cruz. Um, questions for many or comments from any of the board members? Ms. Ella Cruz, I, just to reiterate, so right, I know I saw that one of the requirements was an update on the, on the progress around the school consolidation. Mm -hmm. So the letter has to be in by June 1st and, their first, and our first meeting is looking like May 27th. Are you, yeah. are you confident that we're gonna be able to have the update by the first? Or well, yes, I'm, I'm hoping. Uh, I've been working with the facilitator and we have a tentative agenda and it's just a matter of setting up the virtual meeting. And of course, you know, at this time we thought we would be um, out of the shelter in place. Um, and, but it looks like we probably will need to set up a meeting like this for the first consolidation advisory committee and it'll be um, more of an introductory kind of an orientation meeting um, what we were thinking would be to introduce the uh, committee members kind of go over what the charge of the committee is and uh, the purpose and things of that nature Yeah, and it looks like it's just asking for um, just kind of progress, right? It's not anything specific. It's just where are we in the process? Okay. Yes. And may I add, you know, what you may want to do is add the calendar of the meetings, because I think that will be important for the county to also see um, of what's coming up and maybe even some big picture as, of, um, you know, what, as a committee, you can come up with what, where will you be in, you know, at the next two meetings, and that might also be good information for the county. Um, I, I just wanted to ask, and uh, not looking for an answer, but maybe just something to think about. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be a virtual meeting if we still want to pursue the May 27th date, or if it's going to make it any easier to consider changing um, that date a little bit sooner. Well, um, we kind of looked at, you know, the board meeting being on the 21st and um, not to get too, too many meetings in one week uh, at a courtesy, you know, for our subcommittee board members. So the, the 27th we felt was the soonest at this point. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? Okay, and again, this item was just, again, for information and, and discussion, no action needed. Thank you. Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, with that, uh, no, I don't see no other comments or questions. Um, I actually wanted to comment before, and I forgot to say this earlier before we moved from the superintendent report. Ms. Aquino, you'd mentioned that you were getting some comments that not everyone was able to see the presentation. Um, but I just wanted to remind that the, the meeting is being recorded and it will be uploaded this evening. Okay, so thank you. Oh, the other thing is uh, President Martinez. Uh, yes. Like, uh, are the participants, the audience uh, calling in or they are actually joining via Zoom? I can, uh, we'll I can answer that, Martinez. I'm sorry? I, I can answer that. Sure. Okay. So, uh, unfortunately, YouTube had a live stream um, issue this evening right when we were beginning. So, we updated the board docs agenda with the link to Zoom and everybody is able to click on Zoom and they are able to watch. We do not see them on camera, but they are able to watch and a couple have called in from the phone number. Um, unfortunately, if you don't download Zoom, it's my understanding you're not able to watch it and some um, people are having difficulty with that. Uh, but the YouTube will be um, online tonight as soon as the recording is over. So the interesting thing is I got the active change on the board uh, and now I refresh the board uh, on the to observe the meeting virtually please see below I don't really see the zoom link I only see the Dow US number and the webinar ID um if, if I can just add to that so it on the link in the website where it says zoom in that is the link right there so it's a it's a hyperlink and then it has additional the the meeting number so if people go on the agenda and on the hyperlink where it says zoom they can click on that and it'll direct them to our current meeting 
Member Zhang, it's uh, specified under item 4.1. Um, item 1.1 still has the YouTube I link see. Oh, because I see. the actual call to order was live streamed, but this part isn't being live streamed. I see, I see, thank you. Okay. Elisa, you need to unmute yourself. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, moving on to item uh, 11, 11 11.1, employee organizations. Ms. Aquino, did um, our uh, organization submit a, a statement? I do have one, President Martinez. Thank you. On behalf of the president of NUMA, Katherine Ingram Waters, the Newark Management Association would like to acknowledge the amazing teachers in the district for Teacher Appreciation Week. We know our teachers are the backbone of our district and believe every week should be for appreciating teachers. Thank you for your tireless work and flexibility during this time of distance learning. Although we are unable to celebrate in person this year, please know you have our heartfelt thanks and appreciation. The members of NUMA have continued to support our staff and families during this time. We are working to support relevant professional development for staff and sharing resources with our families. We are beginning to work in teams to brainstorm and plan for the days to come while closing out this academic year. Thank you. Okay. Um, with that, we will move to um, item 12, 12.1. Uh, 12 I'm sorry, under old business is the superintendent search. Um, and this is um, this item does require an action. Uh, Ms. Aquino, I believe you had a slide you can project. Yes. Uh, um, so, yes, so I will speak to this. Um, so this is an um, uh, as ongoing um, update to the superintendent search process. In this instance, we are we will be asking that the um, Board approve uh, a, a stakeholder panel to be participating um, in the interviews. Um, just as, I, as a reminder, in the prior meeting, we had um, talked about maybe having being this a, um, you know, folks would, would uh, drop their name in the hat and it, it would be, we would at random pull names. Um, at the advice of our search firm, you know, just logistically with we're still in this shelter in place condition. What they did suggest was that we went go back to the list of the recommended stakeholders and that we as a board um, bring forth a recommended list. And that's what we have in, in front of us. So um, I, with that um, context, I would um, entertain a motion in a second to approve and we'll open it up for discussions and any public comment. Um, may I have a motion in a second to open um, this item for discussion. Uh, I make a motion. I'll second. Thank you, member um, Gutierrez, member Rodriguez. So this is the uh, the proposed list that we have in front and I'll read those, um, I'll read the names for those that cannot see um, the display. Uh, again, this was the stakeholder advisory panel that we spoke about in um, the uh, study session that we had with a search firm. And these folks would be participating um, actually as in part of the interview process for our finalist, where this team would then generate a list of strengths and weaknesses of some of these potential candidates. So I will read the, um, the suggested list. Um, the City of Newark representative, Mr. David Benoon, educational partner from Mission Valley ROP, uh, Mr. Tom Hansen, Education partner from Maloney College, Ms. Vivian Larson. NTA partner, Mr. Uh, Timothy Merritt. CSCA partner, Ms. Sue Eustace. Community members, at, uh, representatives at large, Ms. Cindy Parks and Ms. Veronica Torres. Parent representative, Ms. Shrivani Sad Sadihar. <laughs> I'm sorry, Shrivani, if I um, uh, upset yeah, or, or cut up your name there. Uh, student representative, um, Mr. Cesar Castillo. Um, site administrator representative, Ms. In Catherine Ingham Waters. And classified management representative, Ms. Debbie Romero. Any um, comments or questions from the board? Ms. Aquino, was there any um, uh, requests for public uh, comment on this item? There were no requests for public comment. 
Okay. If there are no questions or comments, I would um, I will call uh, for Ms. Aquino to repeat the motion, please. Motion to approve the stakeholder panel by Member Gutierrez, seconded by Member Rodriguez. Thank you. Uh, student Member Castillo. Uh, I'll abstain from voting on this item. Thank you. Uh, Member Zhang? Yes. Member Rodriguez? Yes. Member Wynn? Yes. Member Gutierrez? Yes. And my vote is yes as well. So um, the unanimous, or I'm sorry, five, five eyes with uh, one abstention by student member Castillo. Thank you. So with that, we move to new business item 13. Uh, first item is 13.1 COVID-19 grading update. Uh, Superintendent Salinas, would you like to um, introduce this um, subject. Yes, thank you, President Martinez. And as Mr. Ariel Dolovich comes online um, and uh, we have a presentation that comes forward, uh, we, we are in, in an unusual time and uh, per the California Department of Education, California School Boards Association, and certainly our partners at Alameda County, um, we have been working in partnership and mirroring what our surrounding neighbors are doing. But what the CDE has said is that uh, districts are to invoke a temporary grading policy. And this temporary grading policy is an action that we are asking for this evening. Um, we've done a lot. I'm going to have Mr. Dolovich share what some of the background is on this. Um, but certainly the, the biggest um, outcome is that we want to make sure that we hold our students harmless during this pandemic. And so I'll let Mr. Dolovich go ahead and get started. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board. Um, so this presentation pertains specifically uh, for school closures from um, March through June 3rd, 2020 only. Next, next slide, please. The agenda topics that uh, I will go through uh, concisely um, start with the uh, considerations and the guidance we received from CDE and ACOE for determining grading policies the surrounding local education agency policies, or LEA, of our nearby neighbors, the process that we use to identify to be collaborative and transparent and also be timely, and ultimately the recommendation is differentiated for elementary and we will put forth a, a elementary guidance recommendation. And then, of course, policies by the UC, CSU, and the private university institutions which guided secondary guidance for district districts throughout California. Next slide, please. Considerations for grading. I know this is text heavy, so bear with me. Um, ultimately, the California Department of Education recommended, as Ms. Salinas um, just, just outlined, holding students harmless is a primary objective, along with recognizing that there are significant inequities that come with school closure. And I will identify a few, um, obviously access to technology or lack thereof, as well as childcare or supervision at the home by the guardian are two primary um, inequities. It is very important to note that the distance learning plan being uh, put forth uh, will in fact differ from our traditional uh, grading policy. In other words, we would um, hold this only through June 3rd and ultimately return and revert to traditional uh, GPA at the secondary level and our elementary uh, report card, which uh, continues to have some work to do. And we would uh, proceed with that next year. California Department of Education outlined that the LEAs, the local education agencies, have flexibility to use credit, no credit, or a variation thereof, pass, no pass, credit, no credit at the secondary, and that it will have no impact with respect to admission um, or acceptance at the collegiate level. Um, and then, of course, that there are numerous uh, significant subgroups that we need to take into account, um, a few to make note of English language learners, our homeless and foster youth population, and then, of course, as I mentioned, 
the fact that students and families have differing access to digital learning despite um, Chromebook distribution, uh, which also include challenges with technology infrastructure and hotspots, um, very common throughout districts in the Bay Area. And finally, um, it is important to know that individualized education plans and students with IEDs, IEPs, um, they are still adhering to the best of their ability as educators and IEPs are still um, being held as, as to the best of our ability as teams, um, but it does pose significant challenges with respect to um, providing services and remote learning. Next slide, please. Surrounding local education policies. So we've been in close partnership with Alameda County Office of Ed, uh, Ms. Salinas with superintendents, myself with instructional and curriculum leaders. Um, and we've tried to be as aligned as possible um, with respect to um, a possible temporary credit, no credit for secondary and a recommendation for no grading at the elementary level. However, summative comments are essential. Uh, districts that also adhere to this, um, and this is not an exhaustive list, but, um, but it is important to note Alameda, Albany, Berkeley, Castro Valley, Fremont, Hayward, New Haven, Piedmont, San Leandro, San Lorenzo, and and I also received word this week that um, Pleasanton also has um, no grades at the elementary level and summative comments only. Next slide, please. The interactive process began right away. Um, obviously, mid-March was when we moved uh, towards school closure with COVID-19. Um, subsequently, we had elementary meetings with Ed Services um, occurring on March 26th and April 23rd, but we had numerous meetings in between with NTA leadership um, being collaborative and transparent. Secondary meetings occurred on March 27th and April 24th, but not limited to only those dates. Um, Ms. Salinas, myself, and other district leaders meet weekly with principals as well as in close uh, concert with NTA leadership. And as a result, uh, NTA leadership stepped up uh, along with us and we collaborated on a 26 page um, distance learning guidelines for certificated staff and that um, was sent out district wide on April 10th. Um, I mentioned a few other factors that influence distance learning. Um, it's small font at the bottom of your screen, um, access to technology and then caregivers ability to provide academic guidance and supervision. Um, but there are numerous other ones, limitations with respect to physical and mental health resources during the pandemic, um, restrictions with social distancing as it limits in-person support for students. Um, and then of course, the fact that even our own NUSD employees, um, many of which balance um, um, parent, guardian, and supervision along with their own responsibilities during the pandemic, I myself, uh, a parent, and also, um, and also still working and thank, thankful for that. Um, so next slide. Elementary guidance, ultimately, um, NUSD members determined the following guidance in collaboration that for the third trimester only, the second trimester ended in March, um, and elementary students did receive um, grades or numbers and comments for that, um, but no grades, it is recommended for students based on the aforementioned reasons for trimester three. Um, the comments are essential and fundamental, not only for the families and for the students with feedback. We, we, we did discuss at length, um, we didn't want to compromise expectations, but at the same, at the same time with CDE, ACOE guidance and holding students harmless, uh, we felt it essential um, to, to make sure that we take all of those factors into account. Um, and so comments would be essential for families and students with motivation and feedback, but also for next year's teacher. And this would allow for um, there to be continuity and conversation when we talk about returning in the fall from one teacher to the next. Um, and that students during this time, they continue to receive feedback. Teachers are using various platforms, Google Classroom, Class Dojo, um, et cetera. And so whether it's um, via email, 
uh, whether it's being posted with respect to assignments, um, but distance learning, it, th there are responses being made available by our teachers. And so that, that will continue for feedback purposes. Next slide, please. So transitioning to um, grading and um, recommendations at the secondary level, junior high and high school specifically, the UC system, the CSU system, and our private universities um, really provided the umbrella uh, for which many districts followed suit. Uh, UC and CSU both were very clear that, that letter, letter grades um, are absolutely sufficient to be suspended and that students will not be harmed um, will, and will not be hindered by not receiving a grade. Ultimately, GPA, um, cumulative GPA would stand at the end of the third quarter and it would not be impacted, would not be impacted negatively for our students um, for admission purposes. Uh, CSU came out and said that credit, no credit or pass, no mark still satisfies A through G requirements during this time, whether it pertains to our spring or even our summer terms of 2020. Um, and again, it will not hinder and harm the calculation of a high school GPA. And then uh, University of Chicago and Harvard University really set the, um, the direction ahead for private institutions. Harvard um, issuing a letter that's been well received and uh, is, is public. Applicants will not face penalty if their high schools transition during the pandemic, during school closure to a pass fail grading system. So these were conversations with instructional leaders um, throughout the county with other districts. As I mentioned, the other districts that, all, that have transitioned uh, to a temporary um, credit no credit policy. Next slide, please. And finally, um, our secondary guidance and recommendation. Um, secondary schools should transition to the credit, no credit, only for this time period through June 3rd. And then, of course, reverting back to traditional grading in the fall. Um, but going back to Ms. Salinas's point, CDE's recommendation is to hold students harmless. And we had conversations with NTA. And we have been very aligned uh, and, again, collaborative in terms of being like-minded with presenting a uniform and clear policy for our community and for our staff and our students so that there's consistency across the board. Ultimately, 60% and above would equal credit. 59% and below would be no credit. Um, and that this, this reflects the issues of inequities during a time of uncertainty. And we have the, um, we have the, the official approval with respect to state and UC systems as well as private universities. So ultimately, it's a two-part recommendation, elementary, um, no grades with summative comments, and for secondary, credit, no credit. So that concludes the presentation for this evening. Be happy to um, provide any clarification. Sorry about that. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dolovich. Um, all right, so let me repeat the, the recommendation. Um, it's, so staff is um, recommending uh, approval of the temporary grading policy. So I would entertain a motion in a second. I apologize for that. No problem. Uh, to approve a staff recommendation and open up discussion. I make the motion. A second. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Aquino, any, co uh, any comments submitted for this agenda item? No, President Martinez, none. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments from uh, the board for Mr. Dolovich? I have a question uh, in regards to distribution of this information to our, our parents and our community members. Um, um, pretty much, uh, have, has there been any input from the community, uh, the parents, sorry, has there been any input from the parents? Have they been informed of this? Uh, or will all that information come out once after tonight? So, uh, two-part answer. I think I'll take the first part and then turn it over to Ms. Salinas for the second part. 
Um, so a number of the um, contributing uh, teachers are also parents, parents at multiple levels. So they wore the hat of parents for us with respect to um, the interactive process. Um, and then Ms. Salinas provides weekly communication to parents and families. So I'll turn it over to her to answer the second part. Yeah, so we shared very preliminary because we want information. Um, we really, really wanted to um, ensure that as teachers are working with the parent, with their students and our principals are communicating this, that it, it would be rolled out. We will formally roll this out after tonight's action um, and communicate that in English and in Spanish. We had shared a lot of the direction that we were going in terms of, um, you know, seeing what the UC CSUs and private colleges were, were pointing us in. So yes, we will do a formal rollout after tonight's action. I got a question for uh... Mr. Donovich, in your presentation, you talk about most of the school district in Alameda County have some variation of credit and no credit. Can you talk about what that variation is? Sure. So some some districts define it as pass no mark, and and um, I, I would have to um, get clarification from CDE with respect to the difference between no mark and no credit. Um, but those are the two predominant, predominant um, systems that secondary schools are using in terms of districts throughout the Bay Area. Pa uh, credit, no credit, and pass, no mark. And uh, have we entertained any, like the grading option that's happening at Pleasanton where they have this minimum grade where your grade is, is you got a grade in March? before the lockdown, and that's your minimum grade, and uh, going from there on, that you can only improve on that grade. If you cannot do any work due to inaccessibility to technology, your grade will stay there. So you sort of still have the letter grade, while the people who continue to do high quality work can still get A or Bs in the semester. So um, just to clarify, Pleasanton specifically, uh, they have no grades at the elementary level, and they have comments only. And secondary, they have a very clear distinction holdings uh, harmless for the students. That's their primary objective that is board approved. They do at the secondary level have grades A, B, C, but they have credit and not the letter grade D. And they also have no credit in lieu of F. So at the secondary level, they have an A, B, C only, and then they have credit for a D, and they have no credit for an F. I see, um, I see. Yeah, so it's a, that, uh, uh, there's, uh, a very, uh, there's a variation for you. Um, okay. Yeah. So, so, so the pleasant one you say ABC and credit, no credit. That is, they do have this concept of minimum grade, right? So, if before the lockdown your grade is B, then the lowest grade you can get is B, right? Correct. I see. Um, so, to, to that end, um, Mr. Dolowich, uh don't our students also, our grades prior to March 17th are also reflected? Those are not. A they, yes, they, they stand firm. They hold, and, and going back to cumulative GPA, for instance, with valid, determining valedictorian, uh, ultimately that grade for seniors will be determined by the end of the third quarter cumulative GPA. And so there's a, there's a fundamental inequity just uh, to, to, to reference uh, Mr. Zhang. If you have, if you have um, fourth quarter students and you have a valedictorian who has inequities with respect to, for instance, um, uh, access to technology and they get a C during the fourth quarter, I don't know if that's equitable for them to lose their stature as a valedictorian during the pandemic. Well, given the, given the Pleasanton model, if you're a valedictorian and you got an A at, before the lockdown, like right after that, in that, in that semester, your lowest grade is A. So you, you'll continue to be valedictorian in the Pleasanton model. Yeah, actually not true. Um, so if in the fourth quarter, if you received a C, again, so Pleasanton, you can get an A, B, or C in the fourth quarter. So if you get a C well, in the yeah, that just come back to my question. I thought they have a they have a guideline of minimum grade. That's what I'm saying. Like entering into the fourth quarter, like right before the lockdown, if you have a B, even though you can say, I cannot do any work because I don't have computer, then your grade will be B. 
if, if, if entering a lockdown, if you say, I have a B, but I can do some work, I want to improve it, you can improve it back to A. If your teacher realize you are doing better work. So in that case, if entering the lockdown, be, right before a lockdown, if you are a valedictorian, you got an A, then you will get an A. You wouldn't be dropping to B, C, or, or, or credit, no credit. Well, if you, main, if you maintain the B, and the, the student that you're competing with gets an A, then it's, well, anyway, well, I mean, given, given, given this, that like, I can also say if you are credit, no credit, if you are at the F level and then order, you have computer President access, Martinez, I think we're just arguing yeah. semantics at this point. I would, um, I would appreciate it if we moved on. Thank, thank you. And, and I think there, this, um, this actually, we, some of us have had some preliminary discussions. Um, and so I think this question has been asked and answered. So I appreciate that, um, um, Sue Member Castillo. Um, any other questions? Okay. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Dolovich. Um, so with that, um, Ms. Aquino, can you please repeat the, uh, the motion, please? Yes. Motion to approve the grading policy moved by Member Guterres, seconded by Member Wynn. Okay, thank you. And with that, we will uh, take a vote. Uh, Member Guterres, I'm sorry, Student Member Castillo? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Member Guterres? Yes. Member Jean? No. Member Rodriguez? Yes. Member Wynn? Yes. And my vote is a yes as well. Thank you. So the motion carries. Thank you. And we, we will roll this out formally um, to communicate this with our families as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. And with that, um, we move on to item 13.2, uh, Day of the Teacher. Um, Ms. Salinas. <laughs> Yes, uh, thank you. So as I shared at the early, at the, during the superintendent's comments, uh, we are in uh, our, this resolution we bring forward is to recognize and honor our teachers. And so we bring this forward for your acceptance. And um, if you'd like, we could also read it into the record, but uh, I will defer to you. Thank you. Um, I think this is a, this is an easy one, but I will still try to keep the process here. So may I have a motion and a second to uh, vote on um, the staff recommendation to approve resolution 2067, please? Make the motion. I second it. Sorry, Member Rodriguez and Member Zhang. Yep, thank you. Any um, comments or questions before we uh, take a vote on this? Okay, uh, Student Member Castillo? Yes. Member Jean? Yes. Member Rodriguez? Yes. Member Wynn? Yes. Member Gutierrez? Yes. And my vote is a yes as well, so the vote is unanimous. Uh, the recommendation uh, is approved um, to accept uh, Resolution 2067. And yes, I think um, I know that we have a loaded agenda, but I would love to take a couple of minutes and um, and actually read this. And maybe instead of just going round robin, maybe we um, I can ask um, uh, one of you to read it. Um, Member Jean, would you like to read it? Okay. Uh, whereas the 28th annual day of the teacher will be observed in all schools and educational institutions of the state on May 13th, 2020. And whereas the Board of Trustees of the Newark Unified School District wishes to commend and express its appreciation to the teachers who serve the students of the Newark Unified School District. And whereas the Board of Trustees and the superintendent recognize that unique and highly specialized skills are required to meet the very needs of the young people served by the district instructional programs and are proud of the success that these programs have achieved. And whereas it is further recognized that the quality and success of students is the instructional outstanding performance of the, of the teachers who have committed their considerable skills, talents, and energies to meeting the needs of their special students. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees and the Superintendent do hereby thank and commend the teachers of the Newark Unified School District for the outstanding and meaningful contribution they are making to students and families served by Newark schools. Passed and adopted on May 7, 2020, by the following votes. 
Thank you so much, Member Zhang. And um, I'm sure um, on behalf of, of the board and um, just, you know, I don't think that we have words enough to, to just express our gratitude for everything that you are doing for us. Um, not only for our kids, but for us as, as parents and for, um, you know, really supporting us um, uh, along with all the things that you have to do while you're at home. So thank you so much um, for everything that you do for us every day. Thank you. Um, and with that, um, we move to item 13.3, uh, which is uh, Classified School Employees Week. I'm a member, I'm sorry, Superintendent Salinas. Yes, thank you, President Martinez. Um, this evening, we also come forward with our Classified School Employees Week. And as you know, our CSEA staff is invaluable. And I think we really felt it during this pandemic, where at the beginning, um, we could not have all of our folks back to support us. And I know our principals and our administrators and teachers really felt that absence. But now the majority are back with us in, uh, in spirit and in person, virtually. Um, so we bring forward this resolution and we recommend that the Board of Education adopt resolution number 2068, Classified School Employees Week. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Salinas. Um, and um, may I have a motion and a second um, to open discussion and uh, move for approval on uh, the adoption of resolution 2068 per staff recommendation. I move that we adopt uh, resolution 2068. I second that. Okay, Student so Member Castillo moves. Uh, member Wynn seconds. Um, okay, A any comments before we go to a vote? Thank you. I, I kind of um, hug the comments from the last time, so I'll let you, <laughs> let you someone else think so. Um, May, uh, with, with that, Ms. Aquino, can you please repeat the motion? Are you mute? To approve by student member Castillo, second by member Wynn. Thank you. Uh, student member Castillo, how do you vote? Yes. Member Jean? Yes. Member Gutierrez? Yes. Member Rodriguez? Yes. And Member Wynn? Yes. And my vote is a yes as well. Uh, vote is unanimous. Uh, the staff recommendation um, is approved. Um, and I would love um, for um, one of the board members to read through resolution for Classified Employees Week. Uh, Member Rodriguez, would you like to read? Do you have that open in front of you? Yes, ma'am. Oh, where is it? I'm just looking at it. Uh, <laughs> no okay. pressure, we're all staring at it. you. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas the legislature of the state of California has officially designated the third week in May of each year as Classified School Employees Week. It's time to recognize the many contributions of classified school employees to public education and, whereas the members of the Board of Trustees and the Superintendent are personally aware and appreciative of the high standard of quality and service provided by the members of the classified staff, and whereas the services provided by the members of the classified staff have a profound and significant effect on the operations of programs operated by the Newark Unified School District, whereas it is further recognized that all adults in school environment are important to the success and well being of our students, not therefore be resolved that the Newark Board of Trustees and the superintendent do hereby recognize and commend the members of the Newark Unified School District, California School Employees Association, Local 208, for their outstanding effort in serving the district and meeting the needs of the students, staff, and parents of Newark Unified School District schools. Passed and adopted on May 7th, 
by a majority of the Newark Unified Board of Education. Thank you, Member Rodriguez. Um, I'd like to open up for comments from the rest of the board. If hello, hello. Uh, yeah, I just want to commend and thank our classified employee who tirelessly worked during this unusual time, whether it's mowing our lawns, providing food for our low-income students, sanitizing our classroom, prepare ourselves for the return day. So thank you very much. Thank you, Member Zhang. I too would like to um, express my appreciation. Um, we're living in challenging times when more is asked by less and our um, employee groups, uh, in this instance, the classified group, have continuously worked very, very hard to make sure that we don't miss a beat and that our, our kids and uh, school community is served. Thank you. I as well would like to thank our um, entire team for their tireless efforts. And I, I know that in these difficult times, um, Things can get very stressful, but thank you for hanging in, hanging in there with us, and, and thank you for all your hard work and and all that you do for our our staff, our students, and our entire school district. Thank you. Yes, and um, I would just like to echo um, all the same sentiments as our other board members have recognized all of our staff. Um, thank you for all your hard work and um, continued hard work. And we appreciate you guys all so much. Thank you. Absolutely. And um, every single one of you, you know, um, contributes in, in your own way. And the, the, the one thing that really comes to mind is, um, you know, in terms of your, your contributions as a group, it's, it's just, again, keeping our schools safe. But right now, I think about our families and our kids um, and, and our, you know, food services team, um, just the, the fact that you're there and you're a constant for, um, for our kids and our families, that's just very inspiring. And I really, really want to thank you, um, and especially to, to the team, but of course, to the broader team as well. So thank you so much for everything that you do. Okay, um, and with that, we move to item 13.4. Um, Superintendent Salinas. Yes, thank you. Uh, this evening, Ms. Dela Cruz will share an update on this agreement, uh, project manager for Measure G projects. Thank you. So back in February, if you remember, we updated the priority spending on the Measure G projects. The board approved a list and agreed that the best way to move forward is to have a project manager help us get the other projects uh, completed. And so uh, since then, we've sent out informal requests for proposals and I've been working with legal counsel to make sure that we follow the proper process and we've received, uh, we received a couple of proposals and we're recommending that we approve the agreement with RGM Kramer. Um, they were uh, the most qualified and they demonstrated their the competence and um, they have experience with districts similar to Newark Unified size as well as uh, circumstance. So the first part of this agreement is what we're um, considering as a phase one contract. And it's, it's uh, more of a pre-planning and preliminary planning so that they can come in and review our, our project, review our budget and put a plan in place. And that cost should not exceed $20,000. And once we finish this phase one, then we'll get into phase two and actually um, plan out the projects that we'll be uh, completing, going out to bid and whatnot. Um, so for each project, they'll, they'll be submitting uh, cost proposals and we'll take those to the board um, with, with each proposal. Are there any questions? 
Do we uh, do we want to make a motion before we proceed with questions? You're you're on mute, uh, President Martinez. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, staff recommends the approval of the agreement um, between NUSD and our GM Kramer. May I have a motion and a second to open discussion on this item? I move that we approve this item. A second. Thank you. Okay. And with that, um, sorry, uh, Member Gutierrez, you had a question? Uh, or yes. sorry. Yeah, yeah, I did. Thank you. Um, what I wanted to ask is how, do, thank you for, first of all, Ms. Dela Cruz for, for finding this project manager. I know it's going to be um, uh, greatly utilized to make sure that we, we do complete these projects. However, what I did want to ask is how does the work done by ADIS um, help assist or um, just how does it get used with the project manager. I just feel that uh, such a great project should not just be left unused. Right. So the facilities master plan will obviously be a reference for our project manager. So anytime um, we have a project, they'll be referring to the master plan and working with ADIS to make sure that it's aligned with our master plan. And um, in some cases, we may also need architectural services to develop plans and to develop specs. So ADIS will be one of our um, key um, references when it comes to the projects moving forward. So yes, that will be a big part of um, the project manager's reference. Okay. And thank you. And then just in regards to the process uh, of like you mentioned, if architects are needed, mm -hmm. is a bid, does a bid go out first? Does the, um, this current project manager select uh, people he knows um, have um, good, uh, great quality work or does it go straight to ADIS? So normally what happens is they'll develop the plans and the specs with the architect first before it goes out to bid. And um, sometimes that may also include other consultants like an electrical engineer or um, some um, um, mechanical consultants, depending on what the project is. I know we have a lot of HVAC projects, so I'm sure they'll be um, consulting with those experts and make sure that we develop the specs before we go out to bid. And then if it's something that needs to go out to formal bidding, then we'll follow that process to make sure that it's formally advertised and we reach out and follow the right process. Um, but normally the, the plans and specs are developed first before anything goes out to bid. And they'll be providing uh, the turnkey services as they say from start to finish. Thank you. And then when it goes into construction, they'll manage that as well. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Thank you. Um, and I didn't ask uh, Ms. Aquino if there, was an, if there were any comments um, or requests for a comment on this item. Apologize. No, President Martinez, none. Thank you. Okay, uh, with that, can you please repeat the motion? Absolutely, motion to approve by member Gutierrez, seconded by student member Castile. Okay, thank you. Uh, I will call for a vote. Uh, a student member Castillo? Yes. Thank you. Uh, member uh, Gutierrez? Yes. Member Rodriguez? Yes. Member Jean? Yes. Member Wynn? Yes. And my vote is a yes as well. So uh, unanimous um, vote. Um, so the recommended uh, action is approved. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Dela Cruz. The next item 13.5, uh, Superintendent Salinas. 
Yes, thank you. Uh, this resolution is for um, us to apply as an agent for um, to non-state agencies. Um, and if you have any questions, Ms. Dela Cruz is here, but essentially it is to approve for FEMA funds. Mm -hmm. Okay. May I have a motion and a second to open discussion on the recommended uh, approval of resolution 2070? I move to approve resolution 2070. I'll second it. Under Gadara seconds. Any questions? The one question I had, um, Ms. Salinas or Ms. Dela Cruz, is what can these use, these funds be used for? Um, just some uh, idea of some. Well, the FEMA um, funds is a reimbursement process. So it's to reimburse us for costs associated with the COVID-19 pandemic, anything above and beyond. Um, again, it, it could be additional protective um, equipment, supplies. Um, it could also be uh, food services related. Um, basically anything above and beyond. I've been working with the program delivery manager and what they're suggesting is to just make a list of everything and anything you think might qualify, um, anything that we've had to do or purchase um, related to the pandemic and they'll reimburse us. Okay. One of the examples I shared earlier, like the plexiglass, uh, we would not have had to have buy, bought that, a signage of, of, for social distancing, that, that sort of stuff. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions for Ms. Dela Cruz? If not, Ms. Aquino, can you please repeat the motion? To approve resolution 2070 made by member Wynn, seconded by member Gutierrez. Thank you. Uh, student member Castillo? Yes. Uh, member Gutierrez? Yes. Member Zhang? Yes. Member Rodriguez? Yes. Member Wynn? Yes. And my vote is yes as well. So, um, Vote is unanimous to accept other staff recommendation for approval of resolution 2070. Thank you very much, um, uh, Ms. Dela Cruz and Superintendent Salinas. And last but not least on new business is the um, item 13.6. Miss uh, Superintendent Salinas. Yes, thank you. The much awaited and very uh, well discussed and collaboration. Um, so thank you. This evening we bring forward the ratification uh, with the collective bargaining agreement with the Newark Teachers Association. Um, Ms. Dela Cruz and Ms. Saavedra are here to answer any questions you may have, but we uh, request uh, that you accept staff recommendation to accept the ratification brought forward by NTA. Thank you. Thank you. Um, may I have a motion and a second to open uh, discussion on the recommended mm -hmm. action? I'd like to make the motion. I second. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Um, real quickly on my end, sorry. Um, I have to run and grab my, uh, my plug before my computer dies. So if I'm not available, I, I vote yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, any comments or questions for the uh, other members of the board? Okay. Um, just uh, to your comments, um, Miss uh, or Superintendent Salinas. Um, yes, much discussed, much much worked on. Um, just great collaboration. I think that's that's one thing that really shone um, shine through shine shown through. Um, was just the fact that folks, you know, both, um, you know, from from exact from we'll call our district staff and from NTA, really came to the table with the best intentions to make to find a solution, uh, knowing that we all have challenges, um, whichever lens you're looking at it from. Um, the, these these things are not easy. 
Um, so again, it's, it's, um, it's really exciting and it makes me feel really, really good that, um, that we just really always um, think about what the needs of our district are, um, meaning our kids, and everybody really finds a way to make it work. So thank you everybody for your hard work. Um, so if there are no other comments, I will um, ask Ms. Aquino to repeat the motion, please. Motion to approve the ratification of the collective bargaining agreement with NTA by member Rodriguez, seconded by member John. Thank you. Uh, student member Castillo. I don't believe I'm permitted to vote oh, on this item. This is, this is uh, yes, sorry. You're, okay, thank you, thank you for that. Um, member Zhang. Yes. Uh, member Rodriguez. Yes. Member Wynn. Yes. Member Gutierrez. Can you confirm, are we 13.6? Yes, we're still on that same item. <laughs> Perfect thing, yes. <laughs> Thank you. And my vote is yes. So um, the uh, motion carries with five ayes. Thanks again. Thanks for, for everybody's hard work. Okay. On to uh, consent agenda. Um, personnel items. This is the um, item that where we had moved um, item 15, 15.10 uh, up to 14.3. Uh, so we would be voting on uh, the personnel report, the California State University East Bay Agreement um, for student teaching experience and um, 15 point, originally 15.10, now 14.3, which is classified layoffs. May I have a motion and a second um, to accept staff recommendations? I'm sorry, the consent agenda items, I'm looking at the wrong thing here. I'll make the motion. I have a second. Is everybody on mute? I will. I, I will second the motion to um. To accept items fourteen point one through fourteen point three. That was the motion, correct? Okay. And I'm noticing that um, Mr. Rodriguez is not on the call anymore. I think he must have dropped. So. Oh, okay. Uh, Superintendent Salinas, can you just ping him, see if? I will. Thank you. President Martinez, we do have a speaker card when you're ready. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Um, so we have to go ahead and pull that item so that we could vote, right? Which item are we, do we have a speaker card on? Item, uh, what is now 14.3. 14 14 okay. So we can, uh, uh, the motion then would be for approval for 14.1 and 14.2, yes. I rescind my motion and again move that we vote on item 14.1 and 14.2. I second it. Thank you. Okay, uh, so um, I will call for a vote. Uh, Member Gutierrez? Yes. Member Wynn? Yes. Member Zhang? Yes. My vote is a yes as well. So four, uh, four ayes. Motion carries. So um, go, uh, Ms. Aquino, if you could please read the speaker card for item 14.3. Item, uh, which is now 14.3 classified layoffs. I am Terry Marzano, the library clerk at Graham School, James Graham School. I am making an appeal to you as the Board of Education for Newark to reconsider the way you staff your libraries. This district invested millions of dollars in their libraries for furniture, books, and technology. Our jobs have changed dramatically since the libraries were first built and staffed, and yet our job descriptions have not been updated in almost 30 years. We do much more than check in and check out books. We manage the library collection and budgets, order all new material, repair damaged books, collaborate with staff members, parents and members of the community, <coughs> and encourage liter literacy and the love of reading. We track and collect for lost books and entice readers with incentives and reading games. 
We also organize and manage book fairs to raise funds for new books since we do not have a budget for doing so from the school district or state of California. For elementary school and Newark Junior High School has a librarian that is dedicated and passionate about supporting literacy in their schools. And yet this district has continued to staff these positions at less than a half time job with no benefits provided. While the staffing level never really made sense in today's educational climate, it is a travesty for all Newark schools and especially so for our Title I schools. Our students need libraries. Currently, most Newark school libraries are open for three days a week, including the junior high with a student body of over 1,200. It is no longer possible to augment school library services from state budgets, which are ever shrinking and subject to the swings of the state budget system. Between the need to reinvent school with regard to the current and potentially long lasting pandemic conditions and the ongoing discussion about school consolidation, your remaining school campuses are going to have more classes and need more support from their libraries. In addition to attract and keep future candidates for library staffing, you will need to make the house hours and benefits for these positions sufficient enough to make qualified applicants take Newark Unified seriously when considering joining our team. <clears throat> you cannot continue to rely on the altruism and generosity of your long-term library clerks to get the job done. I invested in becoming a Google certified educator as well as an instructional media resource associate on my own time and with my own funds. I am the first one called to help our district current library staff members. As noted in the agenda, after 24 years serving at Graham School, I am being reduced to a less than half time job and having my dental and vision benefits rescinded as well. It is with heavy heart I will be taking all that experience and education with me into an unplanned and early retirement as it makes no sense financially to continue. I truly hope you will consider the consequences of having such poorly staffed libraries as you try to complete with private and charter schools to attract new students to Newark schools. Numerous studies have shown that generous access to school libraries increase, increases student achievement and is one of the things motivated parents look for when choosing a school. I am encouraged all of you to please read some of them and consider how we as a district can grow our libraries instead of continuously balancing budget shortfalls on the backs of our librarians. Your librarians are your partners in education, not a financial burden. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any comments or questions for staff on this item? Uh, I do have a comment um uh related to Ms. Marzano's public comment um frankly i think that you know libraries are an essential part of any school any educational institution um the fact that librarians do so much um they maintain you know the materials in um each library i think it makes a huge impact um on the community when for example uh, our elementary schools and the high school is opened up as a polling place and people come in and they see all the materials um that are on display um and i think that to you know start reducing library clerks um and their hours and so forth is the wrong move to make um to be quite frank i think that a love for literacy and reading is dying in this country um, with the advent of social media um, and you know smartphones are getting into the hands of younger and younger children um, as the generations move on uh, and I think that um, sorry I, I you know I think that reducing library clerks in the presence of um, trained professionals is only going to contribute to that um, so I think wholeheartedly that would it would be the wrong move. Um, I think this is just the beginning of, or I think that if this adoption or this resolution is adopted, that it's going to be only the beginning of a series of library reductions. Um, so I do not support this whatsoever. Um, I have a comment. Mm -hmm. I am in agreement with student member Castillo. I believe that um, libraries are essential to student learning. They are the avenue to, to promoting the love of learning. And um, when, you are, when you have access to the books, they you know, generate that love and knowledge of retaining 
that love for learning. And I am, I, I am opposed to this also. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and again, uh, it, um, this is a question to um, Ms. Saavedra. I know that the resolution calls a layoff. So it, it is a reduction in hours. Uh, if you can please clarify, um, we're going from what to what, just to, you know, kind of, I think, level set with what we heard from the speaker. Um, again, just so I think we are on the same page. Sure, um, the district, uh, 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 the district only finances uh, librarians across uh, all elementary schools uh, at, at 20 hours a week um, uh, sort of uh, position. Uh, there are additional fundings that schools choose to use, such as um, you know, LCAP or LCFF monies that sometimes through their SSC get voted so that some of these positions can be expanded or extended in hours so that they can service more, more students. So what's happening to Ms. Marsano is that unfortunately the SSC uh, and the school voted to uh, reduce the hours in order to uh, support the school in different areas. And my understanding is that they are paying for, they're choosing to finance more mental health. Uh, they also have a bilingual uh, liaison that they, that is very, um, uh, that they, they utilize constantly at the school. So, and, and, and I agree, it's during these times of budget reductions and budget cuts that uh, some of these decisions need to be made, but this, these decisions are made at the, this, at the site level where we give them an amount of money for them to have the flexibility uh, to make such decisions on what they want to pay in addition to what we already give them, the base. Um, and unfortunately, the, this is a result of the uh, priority. The, the, the side decided to go this way and uh, reduce the hours, but the district is still providing the 20 hours that, uh, that, we, that we do across the district. Are you sure it's not 19 and a half hours? And also, I, I mean, I, I understand that it's great to have to give the school sites the flexibility to spend the money however which way they want. But in consideration, I think that the district needs to relook at how we allocate funds and to be able to keep these librarians as essential um, employees in the district because I mean, I just think that, you know, if you don't have that tangible person teaching you to appreciate the written word, how are you going to be a student of learning? That's, it's fundamentals there. And we are getting rid of that. Thank you. So just to Sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry, um, student member Castillo. Um, so Ms. Saavedra, when you mentioned SSC, um, I just wanted to, um, for those that don't know, that's the student site council. School site council. Yeah, school site council, sorry. Um, um, so just wanted to make sure we um, called that out in terms of, and, and I did want to um, clarify. So we have the district funds 20 hours a week for each site right, a librarian for each site for 20 hours. Any additional funding would have to be allocated by the school. So at minimum, I think, and, and maybe you could answer uh, member uh, Wynn's question at the same time, um, what is that, so we are um, going to be funding basically 0.5 of a, of a librarian at each of the sites. Is that what it translates to? It's a little bit less. It's a little bit less if you put it into hours. I think that again, with the flexibility uh, at the sites to um, to to find the times that they need the librarians there. Some librarians times change uh, in 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 the the number of hours that they work per day. So while some people work, uh, we we can say 19 and a half or or 20 hours a day uh, a week. Uh, it's really up to the site's needs to allocate the time during the week. So some, some librarians work three or four hours, four times a week. Um, um, but, but we are funding, we'll call we, the district, with the, are funding 20 hours. Yes. Right. So if somebody gets scheduled for 19.5, 
that's something that we would have to work with the or, or the, the, that would have to be worked out by the school site i think is that's what I'm, is that what i'm hearing right so uh if you look at it as a base we we support sites with the base and that's the allocation that's been given to us and uh and anything additional to that base of the 20 hours per se is paid okay. by right. gotcha um so remember castillo i'm sorry i interrupted earlier yeah, um, so I think it, I think this whole thing how it's a bigger problem um, in terms of the district's priorities when it comes to funding employees. Um, the fact that, you know, we're funding a base of 20 hours and then essentially what you're saying is, okay, school site council, now it's your job, go and figure out the rest of what you want to fund. I mean, it comes down to that. Uh, you can put it in flowery language, but that's what it comes down to. Um, is that here's what we're willing to pay for and you figure out the rest. Right. Um, and I think that it's disappointing that for something so essential as a library, which member, uh, which member Nguyen succinctly pointed out, something so essential as a library to foster the love of literacy and learning um, and to instill good study habits from an early age um, that, you know, you say, oh, we're only going to fund it for half of the time that the school is open and then you can figure out because, I mean, um, back of the napkin calculation, the school is open 40 hours a week, um, roughly 40 hours a week, right? So I think that it's disappointing that we're only funding 20 hours. Um, and I would hope that we can look into funding more uh, and not less because, you know, like, uh, like I've pointed out before, um, libraries are essential at any educational level um, from kindergarten to university. Um, and yeah, no, it, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. And also, it's my understanding that it wasn't Graham's school site council that um, decided to reduce this position. So I definitely need clarification and I would really appreciate it if staff would reconsider and um, reevaluate these positions uh, and really reclassify them as or look at them as um, as essential. Thank you for and and you know as I listen to this, this is a difficult conversation. It's like every all the other layoff um, we'll call layoff or reduction in our conversations we have. I mean, this is a this is a current structural setup. Whether it's wrong, um, this is what's built in the budget, and we need to kind of bring that bring it back to that, right? That this is the current condition of the budget. So, um, if if this, uh, Ms. Dela Cruz, if, is this something that was already um, built in? I mean, we just we, let's just remember um, these are the unpopular conversations and decisions that we need to make. But we need to understand what's the implication um, because you know this would if, if we're at twenty hours and that's been the model, then you know then let's just say it's not good right it's good a bad, it's a bad model let's just say what that's what it is we can't just shift it overnight because there's a huge implication to budget right so that that's my question is um if if at the end of the day the the change is happening right and and i saw the chat come through um that that it wasn't graham i, I don't know i i can't listen to that i have to look to staff so you know um you know, Superintendent Salinas, you know, when we look at the decision that was made to go to, in, to redu the reduce reduction in hours, net net, we are recommending, we, the district is saying, you've got 20 hours, Graham, we can have an employee, um, the librarian employed at half time. Not ideal, we, we get that, but um, if there's any other, you know, question about the, the site allocation, I think we need to go to the site. Right for that for for that decision to be cleared up. So Thank you. Be very, very I, what we're voting for. Yeah, and I could I could share that, um, and I'll let uh, Ms. Dela Cruz also weigh in. Um, absolutely not. It's not what we want. But if you remember, just a few months ago, we were all at New Park Mall trying to get signatures for full and fair funding for our schools. And this is a very tough decision that comes to our board, to staff, to our principals to do. And so what was the agreement as we did the budget was that we considered the base. 
which was this for our classified uh, library clerks, which absolutely not enough. We have to, by educational code, have one certificated librarian, and she is based at the high school. Um, and also, when we look at the number of students and, and all of that, I, that decision was made many years ago. And ed code governs that we must have one certificated uh, librarian. Um, Again, not ideal. Um, what we do, like every other district in Alameda County in the state of California, is that then we give individual funds to each school site. Schools such as Title I, I believe Bram had an additional 56,000 of Title I funds that could be used depending on need. Um, and I guess when we say whether or not it's, a, it's the, the decision of the school site council or not, ultimately every school site is allocated their funds. We are one of the only districts that actually gives LCFF funds to the sites. Many school districts hold them back, and, um, but we continue with that because we know that our principals, our school site councils, really can have those conversations as to what's the need. Um, I don't want to just single out Graham, even though I know this is what's at, at, at hand here, um, but Title I schools, because of the free and reduced price population, get those additional funds to go over and above. So when we look at Title I schools, they will have certificate employees who are more expensive. You know, a teacher is about 100,000, and those decisions are made. Unfortunately, um, here, um, while we can say that, uh, you know, the school site council didn't make this decision now, ultimately your funds are given to the school sites and they can make the decision. Right now, decisions have not, you know, if, if school site council at Graham Elementary would like to reconvene and relook at their funds to see if they could support this, they can do that. Unfortunately, we would still have to go through with the layoff tonight would be my recommendation for those hours, um, but it could come back from the site. If you remember to last year, we had this discussion around um, some positions at the junior high and at that point, we said, if the school site would like to do that, they can use their funds to do that. Um, and I think that's the beauty of, 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 of decentralizing funds as much as possible to the school sites. Um, that's certainly a funding model that I think newer can look at moving forward, where we keep and centralize more and say, instead of giving these LCFF funds to all of the schools, we will centralize it and make a decision of what everyone gets as base. That would be something for the board to think about moving forward. Um, but again, we are keeping with that. Um, I also want to add, and Ms. Dela Cruz can add, um, you know, this year we had a very tough decision, you know, as we were in, you know, with these budget cuts. Um, and as a district, we prioritized that we wanted to ensure that we had enough to do a raise um, for all of our employee groups. Um, and we know that because we made that decision, that means we had to look at what does that mean for the whole district. So what we did instead is that we did not cut funding at the school site level. We kept them pretty much at their same funding. We changed some funding sources, but we ensured they had some of the same funding. And instead, we cut more at the district. So. I know it's, it's um, a kind of a lot of information, but I think as a board, you certainly have the discretion to start to really research that if you want to centralize more funds and make more district decisions um, with, your, with your direction. Absolutely. I'm a parent at Graham, and I know for a fact that they want to add additional hours to the librarian position. There's no way that they would recommend a reduction in in that in that uh, position. So I'm so question. Yeah. I have I have those thoughts, and I'm kind of upset about it. Yeah, and I'm sorry. You know what I what I can do is um, I, I will definitely um, ha follow up with the grand principal and check in. But absolutely, um, you know, at any time, can the school site council look at all of their budgets and and make those decisions? Now I'm you know again looking at the need of the site and because i will say there is also a lot of need at the site at all of our sites um and i know that for graham in particular there was uh, a, an interest in continuing with 
um, some mental health support for students, um, certificated um, instructional support, um, bilingual aid. And again, it, it's difficult because there's only a finite amount of money, um, but, but certainly that, that would be a discussion that happens at the school site council level. And, and it can still happen. Um, you know, we're not done with the site plans yet, but right now as a district and human resources, we had to move forward with the information we had in front of us. So what we're voting on is on, um, so I, I think it's important that we just, you know, really stay focused. It's, it's not how we'll call the parent population. It's the student site council as the um, we'll call the decision makers of, of the fund allocation. And, and I, I think that's what I, I just want to be very clear on what we're voting here. There's a couple of things. One is a district, we need to inform staff if their hours are going to be reduced because the funds haven't been allocated. That's in essence what we're voting for or, or what, what, what's at in front of us for today, right? Not whether they like it, not whether, you know, it, 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 it's just procedurally this is we need to inform um, a, a staff member that this has happened. There's been a change. So I think let's just, that's important to have that clarity. I do want to come back to the 20 hours because I think um, I, I was struck by the, a comment about impact to livelihood um, because, right? So is there a distinction, right? Because uh, I, I, you know, I think we all work in, in, in industry as well between 19.5 and 20 hours and eligibility for, for. And I, I have to, and I have to retract myself. It is 19 and a half. I just received confirmation. It's okay. 19 and a half hours. Yes. Okay. And that's what we allocate to everybody, not 20, not 20 hours. Not 20 hours, it's 19 and a half. Uh, and that's across the all elementary schools, except for the high school. Mrs. Saavedra, you should know this information already. Uh, uh, point of order, I me I member when. So, um, Superintendent Salinas, uh, let, let me ask you a question about this item. Uh, what's what's her timeline? Um, it, you know, can this go back to to the student site council uh, for um, you know for review? Uh, if not, then the, it has to come back to us. At the end of the day, if if the funds aren't there, um, you know we can guarantee a position. I think we just need to kind of be very, very, very specific. We got to let the process work. We as a board can change that process, but right now it's not, we have it, right? So we, we have to work with the process that's in place. So Superintendent Salinas, is this an item that can be brought back? So it can, but, but I want to have a caveat there. So there are uh, rules around a 60 day uh, notice. Okay. And so we would have to be able to notice if we do not have enough of the 60 as, and as you know, it, it's, it's March 7th, uh, mm -hmm. excuse me, May 7th. May 7th, um, there would, um, if we don't have the 60 day window, we would have to pay enough of the bridge to give the proper notification. So we wouldn't be able to get the number of days in because our next board meeting will be May 21st. Um, and then um, let's say best case scenario, the school site council gets together and they said, yes, absolutely, we wanna have these hours, then no harm, no foul, we just go forward. If by chance the school site council decides to cut the hours, um, we would still have to ensure that there is still payment of the hours beyond you know making sure that because of, if we did not get the 60 day notice in on time um and and that would be the the i guess the gap of of uh, a cost okay. that we would incur okay well i think in in the spirit i mean i think there's enough uh passion on the topic for accuracy um and you know for get, getting that clarity of where this decision lies that i think it's worth that um you know giving the time so if if you can pull this item and let's uh, um let's bring it back at the next meeting okay so before you pull the item can i just get simple uh clarification so this is a reduction of roughly seven hours of this library right yes it's so so this individual will still be with this district right I'm sorry. This individual, this librarian, is, is is this individual still going to be with this district after the seven hour reduction? Uh, it, it's it's a little it's a little funny because she just one of the comments that Miss right, right, right. finished reading is uh, that she is going to be submitting her 
I guess she's choosing to retire according to the okay. statement. That when, when I, order, think, yeah, order, I, I think that's, yeah, exactly. That's irrelevant. We're not going to get into that conversation. Order, again, the the position, we're we're talking about the position. We're not talking about an individual. Yeah, okay. yeah. So we need again. to remember that we need to follow the similar rules that we do um, while in the board meeting. Uh, the comment would have been made um, oh, we prior. Don't to, oh, we're so we're the impromptu comments should not be considered at this point. Um, we need to have uh, the discussion that Ms. Martinez is, is directing. Yep, agree. Thank, thank you. Uh, so absolutely, I, we spent quite a bit of time on this topic. Absolutely worth it. Um, just again, from a, us, you know, really understanding, um, again, none, none of this is um, easy for anybody, but the more we all understand, not just those, uh, the faces that I can see on the, on the tiles here, but really um, all of our stakeholders, right? Because um, we may not like things, but but then that's our, some of our responsibilities as an exec cabinet and as a board to direct those changes. But in the meantime, unfortunately, those are the decisions that we have to, uh, the process that we need to follow. And I think we, we just need to be reminded of that. Okay, so let's, uh, let's we are pulling item 14.3. Um, uh, yes, and, and what I'm hearing is that we will consult with the principal and make sure that we have clarity around what process they can take. And um, it will be, it, depending on what their decision is, then yeah. we can see what, what that, what the gap Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thanks everyone for the discussion, thank you. And if I may, sorry, just a quick topic because I know, um, we had this similar discussion prior. When it comes to topics like this, if we can have as much information as possible for our community, um, it'll be a lot easier to, to proceed. Thank you. Absolutely, and I'm gonna ask our principals to also help us with this partnership and, um, and see how we can do that. And, and I think it's a lesson for me also to better support our principals to be able to have this information as well. Yep. Thank you. Again, thanks everyone. Okay, um, with that, we move to item uh, to, um, 15, the consent agenda non-personnel items. Uh, may I have a motion and a second so, to approve? Point of order, uh, I think we probably should extend the meeting a little bit. Maybe, tw I, think, I know 20, min 20 minutes may be enough, but maybe extend by another 15 minutes. Well, I was gonna shoot to end by uh, on time, but no, yes, let's extend, let, let's, so let's do 30 minutes just so we could only extend so, once. So I move to extend the meeting till 1030. I second. Thank you. May I have a vote, please, uh, Member Wynn? Yes. Uh, oh, sorry, Student Member Castillo. I yes. Okay. And Member Wynn. Yes. Um, Member Gutierrez? Yes. Member Jean? And my vote is yes as well. Thank you, uh, Member Zhang. Okay, so moving, um, so item uh, 15, consent agenda. Um, I, may I have a motion and a second to approve items 15.1 through 15.9? I move to approve item 15.1 to 15.9. I second. Thank you. With that, we will uh, take a vote. Uh, Student Member Castillo? Yes. Uh, Member Wynn? Yes. Member Gutierrez? Yes. Member Zhang? Yes. And my vote is yes as well. So um, items 15.1 through 15.9 are approved unanimously. Okay. Um, item 16, Board of Education Committee reports uh, and announcements. 16.1 um, committee reports. We have quite a few active committees. Um, uh, Member Rodriguez did not rejoin, I don't believe. So we do not, we would not have one for Mission Valley ROP nor SELPA. Uh, do we have anything for the city um, liaison? Uh, just to, I can um, say that the this last month's city liaison meeting was postponed due to our current um, situation. <laughs> <laughs> Baby. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Um, East Bay induction. I'm just going to go down the line. You can stop me if anyone um, has a comment. Um, 
audit committee, uh, school consolidation committee. I believe, um, Ms. Dela Cruz, you, um, you gave the update as to when we're looking to meet. Um, the Godby uh, committee um, member, Gutierrez. Okay. Or, or, or Ms. Um, Dela yeah. Cruz, if you'd like, <laughs> just. Sure, I can just briefly say that their information that has been, sorry. We are currently looking to um, this, uh, speak to our all of our board members regarding some of this information before uh, it can be made public. Okay. I don't know if Ms. Ella Cruz wanted to add anything to it. Uh, um, we are trying to schedule all of our board members so we can share the information uh, with the results of the survey and we should have that done by next week okay thank you uh, uh the communication committee a miss a member win or member Gutierrez any, um, any? go ahead member win so uh Member Gutierrez and I are working on um, a formal communication going out to staff, um, hopefully with, by tomorrow or next week. And um, we also have been working with um, Superintendent Salinas and also trying to see if we can reach out to more community members in terms of um, maybe starting some food drives right now and um, listing resources for them to be able to access if they are in need. There's some static, sorry. Um, and then also, um, I just wanted to really uh, commend uh, Member Gutierrez for reaching out to a community member um, in regards to the the uh, graduation ceremony um, committee and um, yeah. sorry can you mute if you're not speaking sorry okay go go ahead member one I just want to um, commend uh, member Gutierrez for putting herself out there and um, recruiting our community members to help partnership with um, for the senior commencement um, graduation ceremony committee so thank you so much and if I can just add to that, uh, a big uh, shout out and big thank you to um, Ms. our community member, Mr. Barry Taimani and his team uh, for for all the help that they're going to provide to us with our, our graduation. So um, thank you to them. Oh, and I wanted to add, um, sorry, remember when I thought you were going to say this, um, huge uh, thank you to Miss um, Julie Calderon, principal from um, Bridgepoint and Crossroads. Um, I, I, I can say that uh, member Wynn and myself had the privilege today of photographing them and assisting um, with their graduation pictures. And it was a great honor, great experience. Um, it, it's, it's wonderful to, to see how excited these students are to um, go on to this next stage of their lives and to share this with with their family members as well and and the the staff and and teachers and and principals who have helped them through this journey so uh, thank you for um member win for inviting me and, and allowing me to, to be part of this it was a great great experience and thank you to everybody that was there today and thank you for the students for coming out <laughs> yes thank you to the students for coming out and actually i was going to make that announcement in the next one but it's okay <laughs> I, I appreciate you doing it and um member gutierrez you're totally hired as the art director i appreciate you so much today with all the um help that you provided there was a lot of emotions um on on the students faces um some of them reluctantly want didn't want to come and then decided to come and and uh, we were so happy to be able to accommodate them and um and it was so 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 wonderful to see their faces thank you so much thank you and and we're kind of you know rolling over into the um the um any announcements or requests so um i'll just kind of go around robin um, real quick here um i still remember castillo do you have any um announcements or requests um 
Not really. Um, I do want to thank Member Nguyen and uh, Member um, Member Gutierrez for um, participating in the uh, Senior Events Committee. Um, uh, it was a lot of um, a lot of deliberation, but in the end, I think we uh, we had the right choice um, with respect to my peers in ASB. I think we um, were much more receptive of Mr. Taimani's proposal compared to all the um, all the firms that that had their own uh, virtual graduation products. Um, so I think this is going to work out much better for the Newark community. Um, so huge shout out to Mr. Taimani for helping us out with that, and and hopefully it goes well. Um, uh, one more, or I am looking forward to participating on the um, the superintendent selection panel tomorrow morning, or rather all day tomorrow. Um, uh, hopefully, I'm able to um, provide some good insight. Um, and then, lastly, clarify, it's not tomorrow, as to remember Castillo. It's the following. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got the date wrong then. Mm -hmm. Shoot. Okay. okay. Um, and then um, lastly, I'm proud to announce I got um, the first of, um, I was, uh, I received um, a community scholarship um, from the California Association of um, Supervisors of uh, Child Welfare and Attendance. Um, I got a $500 scholarship from them. Um, so the hard work paid off. I applied for a lot of scholarships. Um, so I'm hoping that I'll get at least a couple more. Yeah. That's all I have for right now. Thank you. We are super proud of you. Yay. Thank Congratulations. You. Hopefully more, more to come. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Cesar. Uh, Member uh, Gutierrez. Thank you. Um, let me just take a look at my notes here. Yeah. Uh, congratulations to all teachers for um, Teacher Appreciation Week. Uh, and uh, to, to add to those thank yous, uh, a thank you to um, Ms. Bulwark for allowing me to be um, part of her class today. I, her students interviewed me as part of uh, um, career college and things of that sort. So it was, it was a great experience, um, great questions from uh, her freshman class. So thank you again for letting me be a part of that. And um, a huge <laughs> thank you to Mr. King at Graham and Classroom One because I do walk by those uh, talks <laughs> and it's great to see all those signs because I, I get excited walking in and seeing all the love from from the teachers from Graham so I know that the students uh, also get excited to to see those so thank you keep keep putting those chalk marks <laughs> um, and uh, another is just uh, congratulations to the seniors um, for uh, their upcoming graduation. And just to say, um, keep, hang in there, keep your head up. Uh, Got to look at the positive side of this because it's very difficult. But uh, looking at the positive side, you guys are going to go down in history. This year will be remembered. The seniors will always be remembered for their experiences. So um, hang in there. We will overcome this. You will overcome this. And, and then you'll be great for it. Thank you. Uh, member, member Wynn? Thank you, Member Gutierrez. Uh, first and foremost, I just wanted to thank all of the teachers in light of um, Teachers Appreciation Week this week for their tremendous hard work. I know it is not easy to have to learn a new learning curve with all the technology that you had to learn. And not only that, but teach your students remotely and while managing your household and teaching your own um, children at home, homeschooling them. So um, a huge, Thank you to all the teachers um, who are going above and beyond and, um, can, and pushing on with their tenacity to make it all happen. So much appreciation and love with deepest um, pride. Thank you. And, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> with that, I'm sorry, I'm not done. Um, I also uh, had a lot of fun. Um, this uh, on Monday passing out, uh, I'm sorry, was it Tuesday? I can't get my days, my days wrong. 
messed up. But anyways, the cap and gown. <laughs> we had um, a lot of fun uh, being out there. Um, I was able to uh, see member Gutierrez and also um, member Rodriguez, he was out there um, and um, Superintendent Salinas and um, Mr. Dolovich was there and um, it was so great. And thank you, uh, Ms. Rangel and Coach K and uh, Ms. Canales for, you know, organizing it and doing a wonderful job. And then lastly, I will be quick. I have two requests for a report um, that I would like to request two reports that include all elementary school site, um, the number of enrolled students, that include the number of enrolled students, the grade breakdown and number of students in each class and number of combo classes for each site and the number of students in those combo classes for the past five years and what is um, recommended also for the next year at all the sites. And then my second um, question is, what is our current procedure for creating classes for the new school year? What are the dependencies and criteria that drives um, the class and grade layout for the elementary school sites? Thank you. Thank you. If, um, sorry, if I may, uh, Member Martinez, as a point of order, and for us to follow the protocols that we um, agreed upon, if we, we can all just nod our heads to make sure that there's consensus to Member Wynn's request. We did say that uh, probably what two or three meetings ago. <laughs> so um, yes, I, I think you know is there consensus that that is something we'd all like to see is the question. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. And, and if I may, I'm sorry to talk out of turn. I forgot one more thank you. Um, just real quickly, one more thank you to the group of promotoras here in Newark who um, were jumped onto this call today. So um, I'll say it in Spanish. Gracias a todas las promotoras que participaron en la junta de hoy. Yo sé que están bien ocupadas, pero es muy importante que sigan participando en las juntas del distrito y, y, y todo lo que está relacionado con las escuelas de estudiantes. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to mute you, Member Gutierrez. I'm just kidding. Uh, member Zhang. So I want to echo what the other board members have already said. I want to thank our teachers and staff for working so hard during this difficult period of time. And I want to directly speak to the students of our district. Uh, although today the board, uh, we make the decision to change the grading option to credit, no credit. If you still have the resources at home, I still encourage you to continue to do the high quality work at home. 17 years ago, during the Asia SARS outbreak, I was put into the same condition that you were today. I was lo under lockdown. I had no internet at home, facing the big exam of my life, the high school entrance exam, similar to the PSAT at this, uh, in this country. So I had, I had to call my teachers if I have questions, but I really have no other choices but to continue to work hard and overcome the difficulties. And 17 years later, today is your turn to do the same. And when we talk about the culture of excellence, when we promote the culture of excellence, we're not just talking about culture of excellence during good times. We're talking about encouraging you to do the excellent work, even in the face of difficulty, even in the face of uncertainties, even in the face of adversities. So I want to end my encouragement with a quote, things that were hard to bear are sweet to remember. Thank you. Thank you, Member Zhang. Um, you know, I think there's been a, a ton of appreciation and, and there's probably, again, like I said earlier, there's not enough words and there's just everybody really deserves, um, you know, a, a great big thank you from every single one of us, us the broader us in, in Newark, whether it be a citizen, whether it be a parent, um, a student, um, you know, everybody's working really hard. These are unusual and trying times. Cesar, my heart breaks for you and, and your cohort. Um, uh, there's just so many things, right? But um, I, I love the, the positive spin, I think was it you remember Gutierrez, is, no one's ever gonna forget this, right? So uh, you will always be remembered, but uh, again, anything we can do um, to help and ease that, of course, know that we will. 
Um, I, I think what I take away, and I'm going to, I don't know if this is normal or unusual, but I, I really want to commend this board. Um, I'm really proud to be part um, of this team. Um, you know, member uh, Gutierrez, member Wynn, um, you all are working so hard, um, you know, to, to, to work with the students on, uh, to, the, to the senior team. But, you know, I also heard you, um, one of you, you know, talk with uh, Superintendent Salinas about starting a food drive. And there's all, you know, everyone's got a ton of work and, and but you're still finding time and really thinking about our community and thinking about our kids and our parents. Um, so I'm just so, so proud um, of all the work that you do. Member Zhang always reminding us, you know, that, that, the, that the words, um, you know, culture of excellence are not empty words, but, you know, it requires uh, personal accountability on all of our parts. Um, so, you know, I think that there, there um, we have a lot of really difficult um, still trials ahead of us and changes that we need to make, but I'm just um, really, really confident that, um, that as long as we continue to keep you know, we'll, we'll focus on Cesar right now. He's our student that we've got here. But, um, you know, he's, he's a stand-in for every single one of our kids. And, um, you know, I, I think we're, we're, we're going to do some really good things for, 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 um, for the community. And, um, again, you know, we can't do it um, um, without a, a great team. So, you know, Superintendent Salinas, you and your team, um, you know, no, not everything is perfect. You know, not everything works out exactly right. But I know, I think all of us know that you're really putting your best foot forward. So we really appreciate that. Um, and so I actually don't have any requests. With that, I'm going to turn it back to um, to you for any uh, concluding remarks. Yes, absolutely. So again, thank you. Um, I, I do want to make note of, you know, our continuing partnership with the city of Newark has just been excellent and on par. Um, we've had um, a Google Hangout with um, some of the uh, city of Newark employees and the parents and as we're moving forward on the grant that you know how we can support them on their grant um, and so we continue to build on that um, I also want to remind families as I said earlier uh, we will have a workshop we are doing online registration that has not stopped um, please tune in on May 13th we will have an 11 a.m. Uh, uh, workshop in English and a 2 p.m. workshop in Spanish as to how to do online registration. Uh, quiero darles las gracias a ustedes y, y recordarles que el 13 de mayo a las 11 de la mañana vamos a tener un taller en inglés de cómo registrar a su hijo en la escuela y a las 12 de la tarde en español. So we will be sure I just translated the same exact thing. Uh, we will be sure to post that and send it out for my Monday communication to families. Um, again, it, it is going to take all of us and it's hard to work remotely, but I tell you, um, you know, we, we did not get into education because we thought it was going to be easy. And, and I'll say this, this is now my 25th year. I started as a paraprofessional in the classroom and, and I know that, you know, we do this because it's a deeper level. And so I think once we keep our center, um, we know that even though it's hard, it's, it's gonna continue to drive us. So thank you, uh, President Martinez for your words. And um, we'll see you we'll see you all virtually soon <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much and with that i will entertain a motion and a second to adjourn i move to adjourn a second member a student member castillo moves um member Nguyen, um seconds um student member castillo how do you vote yes uh member Gutierrez? yes yeah. member win Yes. Member Zhang? Yes. And my vote is a yes as well. So with that, meeting is adjourned 10.01. Thank oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone have a good night. Thanks good night. for joining. Good night. Good bye -bye. night.